this hall. Welcome to the City of Delray Beach CRA meeting for Thursday, December the 10th, 2020. The time is 2.49. This is the regular meeting being conducted at the Arts Warehouse. Please, we can hear talking in the background. Hello? Call to order. Thank you. Hmm? Call the roll, please. Oh, my stages. Oh, Chair Johnson. Present. Vice Chair Frankel. I'm present. Commissioner Casal. Here. Commissioner Boylston. Here. Commissioner Petrolia. Here. Commissioner Brooks? Here. Commissioner Gray? Here. Here. Very good. I'd like to amend, I don't know if this is the place that I can back. I'd like to amend the agenda based on the recommendation of the Executive Director uh, to move item 9A, the discussion of Corey Jones' Isle statute to a future agenda. I'd also like to request if there is a consensus to move 9B, request for proposal uh, development of the Carver Square workforce housing to the January agenda. Next would be the approval of the agenda. If I could have a motion. Motion to approve as amended. Second. I have a first. I heard a second. Thank you. Uh, I'd be fine with the, the, the first item, uh, but that's the second item. We, we were talking about that not being delayed. We worked so hard, the staff worked so hard to fast track it. Um, and I think we're, we're prepared to have the conversation. I, mean, I know I've never staff you know, about it, I'm expecting to discuss it today. So I, I really, I'd rather not to, you know, delay that discussion. I support my fellow board member. Um, Okay. Well, I think the problem was, if I may state, executive. Renee. We can, Renee Jadison, we can, if you'd like, if it's the will of the board, then we can go forward. One issue we have is we can't get the presentation just yet for that item. Um, so if we want to go forward without the presentation and just speak about it, we can do that, but we can't actually pull it up right now. We're anticipating at least a two hour uh, telephone call comments from the public. Uh, so if you want to add that to it, it's just going to make it a little longer. Oh. I have no problems. Can I, I ask mean, a question? Did we have uh, comments on that item and will they be played or is that an item that was not uh, commented on? Uh, I don't think that item had many comments. So it's the, the um, BH3 item. Has so that wouldn't add any time on to you. No, no. Well, if it's a consensus to keep Corey, uh, not Corey Owls, is it Corey Owls or? No. no. Carver. 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 Very good. Um, there, there is a motion though, yeah, right? There is correct. There is a motion on the floor to amend the agenda to defer those two identified items. Call the roll, please. Vice Chair Frankel? Yes. yes. Commissioner Cassell? Yes. Commissioner Boylston? No. Commissioner Petrolia? No. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Gray? Yes. yes. Chair Johnson. No. I believe motion. the motion passes motion four to three. Fail. No, no pass. 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 Thank you. So we are going to keep item nine B. No, ma'am. No, okay, I'm sorry. That results in an amended agenda. If you would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended, please. Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Second. Commissioner Cassell? Yes. Commissioner Boylston? Yes. Commissioner Petrolia? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Gray? Yes. yes. Chair Johnson? Yes. Vice Chair Frankel? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, approval of the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll, please. Yes. Commissioner Boylston? Yes. Commissioner Petrolia? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Chair Johnson? Yes. Vice Chair Frankel? 
Yes. yes. Commissioner Cassell. Yes. And that was for October the 27th, 2020. Now a uh, approval of minutes, November the 12th, 2020. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Petrolia? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Gray? Yes. yes. Chair Johnson? Yes. Vice Chair Frankel? Yes. yes. Commissioner Cassell? Yes. Commissioner Boylston? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much. Item 5, meeting the um, PowerPoint presentation. Renee? We, we have the PowerPoint up there just for viewing on the agenda, but it's not actually an item to okay. take action, so okay. we can go forward. Sorry. Uh, item six, public comments on agenda and non-agenda uh, items. Non-agenda agenda items. Renee. Okay. So we'd ask if there's any public comments to, to step to the podium. Oh, they, you cannot hear us back in your section. Uh, is there some technical reason? Testing, testing. Can you hear us now? Yes? No? If they were to be put inside, is that a complication of distance? So if that the board's comfortable with that, then okay. They can't hear us. It's not Chairs up front. Can you hear now? Okay, thank you very much. So, are there any any comments from the yes, ma'am? We have public who are present. We have one oh, gentleman sorry. here. I thought there was a podium or something over there. There is, yeah. There is. It's right here. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. My name is Daniel Roseman. I represent East to West Development Corporation, which is item 9B. And I just had a comment with respect to the understanding the reason for its deferral. Um, I understand that the board voted, but I wasn't given or we did not disclose the reason for deferring the item. Does anyone else have a public comment? We do have comments that are recorded. So if no one present would like to comment, then we'll ask for the, those to be played. Yes. Yes, my name is John L. Bean at 695 Lindell Boulevard, Derry Beach. I support the BH3 project that's on Atlantic Avenue. Have any comments? Five six one seven six seven seven eight nine eight. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Wayne and Roy. I'm in the thirteen Southwest Ninth Court, and I support the project that's going on Atlantic Avenue. And I thank you that you are thinking about our community, and I hope that you know we will come together and we will break down this racial barrier that's going along. Thank you kindly. Bye. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, my name is Kenal Lomini. My uh, address is 575 Northwest 45th uh, Delhi Beach, which is 445. I support the BH3 project that coming soon. Thank you. Mike Johnson, 245 Southwest Ninth Circle. Um, but it's about the project. Thank you. My name is Claudia Lewis. Uh, I live at 214 Southwest 12th Avenue, and I support the project. Hi, my name is Shakur, and my address is 11 Southwest 6th Avenue, Apartment 9, and there will be 433 444, and I do support you guys putting in a, a public. 
shopping area because it actually would be very convenient to actually walk there and not have to drive any other place. So yes, I do support. Thank you. Hello? Oh, no. My, my name is Kerry Jindikaba. I just made a tweet or two, three or two, two, three or two. Uh, so this, uh, start to have to be a little. I'll see what it goes there. Hi, my name is Shakur, and my address is 11 Southwest 6th Avenue, Cherry Beach, Florida, 33444, and I support DH3 for putting the public across the street because it's convenient, it's local, and don't have to worry about going to any other shopping center. Good evening, my name is Shantavia Young. My address is 11 Southwest 6th Avenue, apartment four. I was calling in regards to the movement, the CH3 movement. Um, I definitely support the movement. Um, I'll be thankful if you guys do put a public in the neighborhood because that'll be convenient for me being a single mom. Um, my number is 561-562-1859. Again, 561-562-1859. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Yes, I'm Angela Wilson. I, I reside at 116 Avenue, Apartment 1, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. Yes, I would love for you guys to put a public there so it'd be closer for me, convenient for my grandson to get a job or anything for the community to help us out. Um, um so. I would love for you guys to do that. That'll help me be convenient for me and also to get my grandson a job. Oh, and I also forgot to let you guys know. I support BH3 and I'm Angela Wilson. Stop the stuff, rice and beans and all that. Spring Williams, address 11 Southwest 6th Avenue, apartment 8, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. I support BH3, so that can provide jobs and support the community for public coming in on 6th Avenue, Southwest. Thank you. Hi, my name is Celestine Pickett, and I would like to support the public in our area so it can be convenient for us. 569-768-8663. Thank you. Lady Madison. Yes, Celestine Pickett, 21 Southwest 6th Avenue, apartment number 5, in the Florida. Florida. Yes, I support the public. Um, in the area um, to be more convenient for us to get to the store. Um, Samantha Humany, 561-343-4852, and I want the public there for job opportunities and convenience. So, um, support BHB. BH3, sorry. <laughs> My name is Timothy Garvin, T I M O T H Y G as in girl, A R V I N, birthday 33081. 3381. I love public chicken. I want them when they are coming, about to start digging now because I want chicken to the soil. Some banana pudding. Who are you ever public? We support DH3. I support DH3 too. Hello, my name is Marie St. Cal, and my address is 39 Southwest 6th Avenue, Derry Beach. And I just was calling because I wanted to support the BH3 because it was really a good project, especially for public. It will be really close by me, so I really support them. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Hello, this is my name is Robinson Dumazo. I live in this area. My address is 121 Southwest 10th Avenue, Derby, Florida, 33444. I completely support this project. We would like to have that, that done here. 
It has been needing a change for some time. Thank you. Just I'll be off. Hello, I'm David Thomas at 39 Southwest 6th Avenue. Uh, I would like to just let you all know that I am in support of BH3 bringing the public. We've been waiting for years for a public, and we finally have one coming, and we need the public so we can create jobs. We need the public so we can walk to buy our food. We're tired of having to drive so far just to buy food. And so we support BH3 and the Fabric Project. Thank you. Hi, my name is Willie Desi. I'm in at 41 Southwest Avenue on Florida, uh, it's called 33444. I support the public. All right. Trayvon Hollis, 112 Southwest 6th Avenue. I support B12, B12, B3, BH3. Bringing in the public. Hi, this is Philanda Ely. Um, I support the BH3. It's convenient for me, it's in my area and I'd like to leave my support for the public. Thank you. So my name is Desmond Alexander. The address is 110 Southwest 6th oh. Avenue, Derby Beach, Florida, 334444. I support DH3 and Publix. Oh. Hi, my name is Jean-Claude Lamar. My address is 109 Southwest 6th Avenue. There will be exploded with me four 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 four. I support these three and pub likes. Hi, my name is Lorenzo Penn. Yeah. My address is thirteen twenty four five six three. There will be exploded. I'm support the B H three pub. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ryan Sam. I live one one six Southwest. All the new building. Florida, 3444, I support BH3, bringing the public, it will definitely bring jobs and support the kids. Hi, my name is Tatiana Lozen, and my address is 118556 Ave, Derry Beach, and I support BH3 and Cyber and Project, bringing public. Hello, my name is Dolores Lotion from 118 South 6th Avenue. Um, I'm just calling because I support BH3 bringing a public near my neighborhood where I can walk and my children can get jobs. I'm super excited about it and I hope that we can get it done. Hi, my name is Aunt Shay. My address is 10081 Point and Play Circle. Florida, 33437. I support BH3 in the Fireback Project, and I would like you guys to bring it to our neighborhood. My name is Maya Cook. My number is 561 I live at 13 Northwest First Avenue, Derby Beach, and I support BH3 for bringing public into my neighborhood. Lavina Rosen, I take one with eight thousand six hundred thirty four to three four four four. I support BH three. Bring in public. My name is Nigel Gillett. I'm from one twenty five South Six Avenue, Delray Beach, and I support BH three for public. My name is Castillo Simpson, and my address is 125 Southwest 6th Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. And my telephone number is 561-860-4233. You can always give me a call. And I support um, BH3 uh, for public coming in. I'm glad I'm home today, Christopher. I'm here. 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 I'm here.
My name is Barry Griffiths and I'm from 125 South Sixth Avenue and I support BHT for public. I always said I'm going to buy some before and they send the Facebook. Hi, my name is Augustine Felix May. I'm living in Delray Beach, Florida, 69216. I support the project for Atopic. Okay. Loretta Wright, 1302, Prospect Street, Delray Beach, Florida. And I'm supporting BH3. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sandra Javier. I live at 140 Southwest Fifth Street, Cherry Beach, Florida, 3346, 33444. And I support BH3 for public to be built in Gary Beach. Thank you. Uh, Hi, my name is Aini Gitsimi, I'm a CC um, barbershop. Um, the address is 82 Southwest 6th Avenue, there will be Florida, 33444. I support BH3 Publix. Hi, my name is Charkiva Williams. My address is 237 Northwest 14th Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida, 33435. And I'm calling because I support the BH3 uh, to bring public into our community. Thank you and have a great day. Timothy E. Kitchens, 1102 Northwest 2nd Street, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. I do support the CRA. Uh, redevelopment on Atlantic Avenue, West Atlantic Avenue, we do support it. Oh. Hi, my name is Willie Caesar. My address is 712 East, Castellane Boulevard, Delray Beach, Florida. Um, I support uh, DA Street bringing public to Delray and all the other shops that they're bringing. And uh, I think it's a great idea uh, for our community. We need it. And I support it 
Thank you for taking my call. Hello, hello. my name is Jared Bryant. Address is 425 Southwest Third Ave, Beach, Florida, 32444. And I am calling to support the public um, through BH3. Hi, my name is Mother Nelsonfield. My address is 699 Auburn Avenue, Unit 103, in Delray Beach, Florida. And I support BH3 Public coming to my neighborhood. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ephrecia Brown. My address is 37 Southwest Fifth Avenue. Delhi Beach, Florida is a post three four four four, 344 and I support the upcoming public. Hi, my name is Pamela Waters. My address is 28 Southwest 8th Court, Delhi Beach. And I support BH3 bringing public. And thank you. Have a good day. Hi, this is Ephrecia Brown. address is 37 12 South Beach. Avenue. Shorter, the and I support the upcoming public for Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Lennox Ferguson. My address is 237 Northwest 14th Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. And I support BH3 and the Fabric Project bringing the public to my community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pauline Caesar, 712 East Boulevard, Chateauline. I support BH3, bringing the public to the community to help create jobs in a great atmosphere. Thank you. Oh, that's the kitchen. 332 Northwest 10th Avenue, Derry Beach, Florida. 33444. I support BH3 versus public. <laughs> Hi, my name is Betsy Kitchen and my address is 332 Northwest 10th Avenue, Derry Beach, Florida. And I support BH3 bringing public into my neighborhood. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, okay. I support BH3 bringing public to Derry. My name is Willie Newsom. My address is 700 Lindale, Lindale Boulevard, apartment 312B, Delray Beach, Florida. My name is MacArthur Wesley. I live on 1001 Northwest Spirit Terrace in Derry, Beach, Florida, and I support the uh, BH3 bringing public to Derry, Beach, Florida. My name is Carl Patterson, and I live in 331. Northwest 11 Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. And I support public coming to Delray Beach by um, supporting the group. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hi, my name is Dora Brown, and I support public coming to Delray Beach, 3 Thank you. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Vincent Vasquez. My address is 320 Northwest 11th Avenue, Derry Beach, Florida. I support BH3 bringing public. My name is Antonio Ocotera. I live in 316 11th Avenue, Derry Beach, Florida. And I support B3, BH3 bringing public. Demetria Edwards, 308 Northwest 11th Avenue. I support DHS for jobs. Oh, yeah. Anita, A-N-I-T-A, Edwards, E-D-W-A-R-D-S. 
700 Lindale, L-I-N-D-E-L-L, Boulevard, apartment eight, apartment 104A, Jerry Beach, Florida. And I support VHS bringing the uh, public to Jerry 6th Avenue for jobs. I hang up the other phone now. I hang up the phone now. Can I read Edward? I support VHS bringing public for jobs and more opportunities. My name is Action Sensova. I'm living in 5041 Northwest, Fox Street, Delhi Beach, Florida. Tweet with 445. And I'm just calling to see about the project in Lake Avenue. Thank you. Hi, my name is Richard Edwards. My address is 123 Southwest 12th Avenue. Delray Beach, Florida, and I'm calling in support of BH3, bringing the public to 6th Avenue, I'm going to help out with jobs for my community, please, and thank you very much. Hi, my name is Denavius Edwards, I stay 308 Northwest, 11th Ave, Delray Beach, and I support BHS. Uh -huh. My name is my name is Ryan Jones. I support BH3 in the fabric project because we have waited too long for groceries and they have public and we are ready to deliver. My name is Denavis Edwards. I stay 308 Northwest 11th Avenue Ray Beach and I support BH3 bringing public soon because we need jobs. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kendra Jackson. My address is 307 Northwest 11th Avenue. I support BH3 bringing public. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deontay Reed. My address is 2102 Southwest 13th Street, Derry Beach, Florida. And I am supporting BH3 bringing public. Thank you. This is Tavon Mitchell calling from 320 Southwest 11th Avenue. I'm just calling because I support BH3 in the fabric project because we have waited too long for a grocer. They have public and are ready to deliver. Let's bring this public strong. I'm yes, my name is Shakira Edwards, address 308 Northwest 11th Avenue, and I support BH3 in the best. Bell Week project in my neighborhood. For jobs. For jobs. Hi, my name is Patricia Arnett. I live on um, 302 Northwest 11th Avenue. And I'm, to, I'm here to support public coming to the neighborhood, BH3, to support jobs. Thank you. I Hello, this is Simpson Edmund. Um, I just calling about the project from the, the city of Dorrit. My address is 2839 Dawson Way, Dorrit, Florida 33445. I support the project, as I said. Thank you. Mayor Jane Wilson, 308 Northwest 10th Avenue. Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. I support. I support the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn Jones, 308 North West Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida. I support the issue. BH3. Thank you. I support BH3, bring in public. Um, my name, Willie Davis, 324 Northwest 10th Avenue. Thank you. Um, my name is Autumn Davis, and my address is 324 Northwest 10th Avenue, Derby Beach, Florida, 33444. And I support BH3, bring in public space. 
Michelo D. Yerjusi, 709 Southwest, 6th Avenue, Delray Beach. I support, it. I support uh, BH3 for being Bobby. Hi, my name is Eleanor D. Justice, living at 709 Southwest, 6th Avenue, Delray Beach. And I sip up BH3 bringing in public. Hi, my name is Marwan Smitty Justy. I live in 709 Southwest 6th Avenue, Delhi Beach, Florida, and I support BH3 bringing public. Hi, my name is Bennett Dawkins. I'm living at 709 Southwest 6th Avenue, Delhi Beach. I support BH3 bringing public. Hi, this is Pastor Carla May from 200 Sterling Avenue at Galway Beach. And I'm just calling because I really want to stress the importance of my support for BH3 uh, and the project that they're doing and the new development, the thing that they're doing here is going to bring jobs uh, with the public. I'm super excited. The people in my community that I serve here in Galway are super excited about it. Uh, to have a public that you can walk to, um, something that our children, uh, you know, could provide food and um, something that we can afford um, to, you know, we don't have to go too far for it. I really, really, really want to stress that it's important that we have it. It's been a long time coming, and um, I remember when there was a public in our community before, closer to us, and we really missed it. And so. I just thank you all for considering us and our opinion and um, for bringing the food from the, uh, from, in, from Publix and there's just the support of BH3. We're really excited about it and we just wanted our voice to be heard here um, from uh, our resident here at 200 Sterling Avenue. Again, my name is Dr. Carl May. Thank you all for listening. Bye. Good evening, my name is Tiffany Mays. My address is 712 E Boulevard, Shadow Lane. Um, I am calling because I just wanted to say that I support BH3 and them bringing a public into our community. It has truly been um, a long time waiting. We used to have the public here in the community and now to hear that they would like to bring one back would be truly amazing. We have truly waited too long for a brochure to be available and accessible to us within walking distance. Um, and I believe that this would truly be an amazing addition to our community. Again, my name is Tiffany May. My address, 712 East Boulevard, Shadow Lane. And I would like to stress my support for BH3 and them bringing a public into our community. It is a necessity, it is needed, and I believe that it would truly be very beneficial to the people of this community and to all of those who uh, may even be around. Um, thank you so much. Have a great evening. Hi, uh, good afternoon. I'm Willie Caesar Sr. Uh, calling. I'm from 311 Northwest 11th Avenue. Uh, calling to say that I support BH3. I support the movement of getting a public so that our children can have jobs and so that our people can actually walk to a grocer. And we just really, really need that. Thank you. Alena? Yes, my name is Audrey Gutierrez. My address is 2655, Coca is Alena, Delhi Beach, Florida. I'm support of the uh, uh, program the Atlantic, Atlantic, Atlantic. Okay, thank you so much. Hi, my name is Shirley, and I live at 332 Northwest 10th Ave, Delray Beach, Florida. And I'm calling on behalf of supporting BH3 and bringing public into our community. And I definitely appreciate the move to make sure that our community gets um, develop, development that would benefit them and their families and the communities by bringing jobs and the convenience of walking 
to Publix to get real grocery food and not just walking up to a corner store, liquor store just for junk food. So that would definitely help our the mental health and physical health of our community. Um, this would be historical and I 100% support BH3 bringing in Publix into the Delray Beach on Atlantic Ave. Thank you so much. My name is Larry Stevenson. My address is 220 Northwest Dix Avenue, and I support the project in Derry, Derry Beach. Hello, my name is Shanti Blue, and I live at 311 Northwest 11th Ave, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. Um, I just want to say that I support BH3 and the Fabric Project and bringing public to our community. I really think it is a great and awesome way to provide um, jobs and our community needs um, their own grocery store. It will be very convenient for everyone in the community and also great walking distance for everyone within the community. Thank you. Yes, Anthony Nave, 200 Sterling Avenue, Delray Beach, 33444. I would like to state for the record that I do support BH3 and the Fabric Project on bringing publics to our community. I, just, I think it's just simply outstanding, as well as being an awesome way to provide opportunity for those in the community, uh, increase ev uh, revenue, uh, provide jobs, and uh, not to mention it being convenient for those who may not have transportation, so it's a walking distance. Gloria, I just think it's uh, awesome, an awesome move for the community in Delray Beach, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it go forward. Thank you. Good afternoon, this is Tanya Stillwell. I live at 333 Northwest 6th Avenue in Delray Beach. Florida, I support the BH3 bringing a public to our neighborhood. I have grandsons that need a job. I have a son that needs a job, and we don't have a car. I don't. So um, I would appreciate y'all letting this go through. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brianna Mays, and my address is 332 Northwest 10th Avenue in Delray, and I support BH3 bringing a public into the area. Um, it is quite challenging for my family, as I have elderly citizens, um, elderly people in my family, to get them the things that they need. But with the public in the area, it would be very um, sufficient for us. And it will definitely bring, uh, bring a lot of employment to the community. So I support BH3 bringing public into this area. Hi, my name is Sharna Harris. I live at 333 Northwest. 6th Avenue, and I support the H3 bringing the public into our area. I have two teenage sons and a brother that need jobs, and we don't have um, transportation, so it would be great for us to have a public that we could get to easily. Thank you. Hi, my name is James. I live at 128 Southwest 3rd Avenue, Therapy, Florida. I support the BHD projects of bringing public to the community because they have help of jobs. And my name is Nossi Bien Monom from Blockage Code Barbershop, 704 West Atlantic Avenue. I started working in this location since 1990. So next month, I will be 31 years working in this barbershop. So since the first developer um, equity, I had a license to form a beauty salon. So I would like to own my space. I believe after all these years, I've been working in this location. I deserve to own it. But we were waiting for the development to come to the Atlantic Avenue. So I think we're getting close now. So this development will support the community by creating some jobs and more activities. So I support this project. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hi, my name is Rick Olson. I live at 128 Southwest Fort Avenue, Derry Beach, Florida. I support BS3 and bringing public to our community. It'll create more jobs and help a lot of people who don't have cars to walk over there and buy food. And it will also save money on gas. Hello, I'm Cassandra from 320 Southwest 6th Ave, and I support DH3 
bringing public into our neighborhood for more convenient shopping locations and bringing jobs to our location. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carla Sydney. I live in the address 128 Southwest 3rd Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida 33444. And I support BH3 bringing a public. Hello, I'm Christopher Caesar uh, from 332 Northwest 10th Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida 33444. I'm calling in support of BH3 bringing the public to our community. We've been waiting for some type of grocery store for at least 40 years before my grandmother even passed. Um, I just uh, would like it to be there in the fabric project because of convenience to walk there to shop and not spend gas money and also for jobs, to create jobs and you know, we want to demand that they allow the community to be hired, uh, at least 70% of the hirees being from the community. So we appreciate you all, and uh, we thank you for the, the for bringing the public. Hi, my name is Denora Caesar. I live at 712 East Chatelaine Boulevard, Gary Beach, Florida. I'm calling in support of the BH3 project. Um, bringing in the public and the fabric project um, that would really help elevate our community and their well-being and being able to have access to a convenient actual grocery store. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Bye. Hi, my name is Christy Smith and I stay at 1005 Southwest 2nd Street and yes, I support the project in Atlantic Avenue. Hi, my name is uh, Nigel Caesar, and my address is 712 East Boulevard, Shadow Lane. And uh, I just wanted to say that um that I support the VA3 bringing the fabric um, project to public and um and public, you know. And I'm really supporting. I'm really liking what they're doing and stuff like that. So I think that that should be pushed a lot more. And I'm very very supportive on it. So just wanted to let you guys know. All right. Thank you. Have a blessed evening. Yeah, yeah, man. Hi, uh, my name is Douglas Parker, and I stay here in Delray Beach, 731 Avenue, Vermont, Delray Beach, Florida. I support the BH3 bringing public to the Delray Beach neighborhood. I support it because it'll provide jobs for the team and for people in the area. Thank you. Hello, my name is Roger Parker, and I am a resident in Delray Beach, and I support the BH3 bringing public to Delray because I'm quite sure to help support the job systems in the community, and um, we need convenient shopping in our own area. Thank you. 1009 Northwest 33. Here be Gary, 47 Country Lake, 234, 36 Delray Beach. I support the construction in Delray Beach on uh, Atlantic Avenue. Hello, my name is Robert Dinochen, D E N O C H M T. My address is 914 Southwest First Street. I'm calling in regards to the development um, that, that, that is upcoming. Uh, it's been a long time since we're waiting for that in the area. <clears throat> I think it's, it's time for us to. Um, to, 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 to get this done in this community. So uh, we, in the community, we support this uh, development that's coming because it's been a long time since we've been uh, waiting in the area. So all the areas have been developed, but except for our area right here in, 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 in Delray Beach. So uh, we would uh, really appreciate it if you guys could um, um, give access to this development to take place. Um, it's been a long time, so our community uh, has been suffering and uh, we've been behind when I, in regards to all the other communities and what, um, when we're going to Boynton, going to everywhere. So um, if you uh, could uh, facilitate this development to take place, um, 
uh, with all of this coming up. I think there's a bank coming up. I think there's a pharmacy, pharmacy coming up. So um, uh, I would, we would really appreciate it. Thank you. 914 Southwest First Street, and um, I'm Robert, you know, thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ruben Sen, Jadoni, and not even Dara Beach at uh, 121 Southwest 13 Avenue. And there's the a project that's going on in Dara Atlantic. And I would like to support that project to move forward. Hi, good evening. My name is Charlene Bryant. Address is 915 Southeast 3rd Avenue, Dara Beach, Florida, 33483. Calling to let you know that I do support the project that's occurring on Atlantic Avenue. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, this is Jimmy Norbert. They want to be to Southwest 11 in the area and support the Fusion. So, okay? I'm not having a little bit of that. My name is Archie Burns, and I live at 341 Southwest 6th Avenue, and I support the project on Land F. Hello, my name is Philly Justin. I live in Derry Beach. And our address is 5055 Northwest 5th Street, Delray Beach, Florida. And I support the project. My name is Blake Ness St. Louis. My address is 2888 Dawson Way, Delray Beach, Florida. Zip code 33445. I support the project on Delray Beach. Thank you, 10 1309 Lee Street, Delray Beach. I approved of the project on Atlantic Avenue um, between 5th and 9th Avenue. Uh, we we'll appreciate if you can get this moving. Thank you. My name is Walter Levinson. I live at 15244 Lakes of Delray Boulevard, apartment 201. I, I love uh, Delray Beach and I've been a resident here for over 10 years. I, I look forward to the development of the cabbage project because I know it will bring jobs to my community which are needed. It, it will provide income-based rentals that people will be able to afford. And I, I want the community space that DS3 will provide in the new development. So therefore, I'm in full support of that public project. Thank you so much. Hi, good day. My name is Don Ginsburg, G-I-N-S-B-U-R-G. -E. My address is 110 Hendricks Isle. I'm calling in support of the fabric project that I uh, think BH3 wants to build. I'd like to see development occur in this area. It's been neglected for too long, and uh, we need jobs in the area. I'd love to see a grocery in the area, uh, affordable housing in the area, and I'm not sure why there'd be any opposition to that proceeding with the plan that this area needs to revitalize this area. Thank you very much. Again, it's Don Ginsburg, 954-868-7102. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tim Lefting Olin, O-L-E-N-N. -N. I live at 11902 Waterwood Drive in Boca Raton, Florida, 33428. I'm calling about BH3 and the fabric project in Delray. Uh, I have had uh, about seven years uh, working with BH3, and I found them to be uh, have extreme high integrity, uh, and they always deliver excellence in all the products uh, and projects that they work on. Um, they're great people, and I really hope that you will strongly, strongly consider them as the only real viable option for this project. Uh, thank you very much, and feel free to contact me with any questions you may have. Five six one three five zero three four six one. Thank you, and enjoy your day. 
My name is Emmanuel Vincent. I live at 5884 Morning Star Circle in Delray Beach, Florida, 33484. And I'm calling to support the project on Atlantic Avenue. So uh, if you have any questions, please give me a call. Hi, this is Ari Goldman. I'm leaving very firm support for the uh, BHC project, uh, which is also, I think, called the Fabric Project on the Bank Avenue. Uh, I'm a business owner in town. Uh, I own uh, Point Famous, uh, and my address in town is 524 West Atlantic Avenue. 524 West Atlantic Avenue. Again, Ari Goldman calling in support of the BH3 Fabric Project. Uh, please, uh, if anyone wants to call me and follow up, I'm happy to respond. 516 448. 7543. 516 448 7543. Thank you. My name is Gene Alfred Wani. My address is uh, 693 Urban Avenue, uh, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. Uh, I support uh, project and other things. Hello, my name is Robert Sloan. My address is 118 Northwest 13th Avenue. Delray Beach, Florida, 33444, and I support the Atlantic Avenue project. Yes, Terrence Ellis, 43 Southwest 12th Avenue, and I support the project. Hi, my name is Carol Rollins, and I live at 34 Northwest 6th Avenue, and I'm just calling to say that I support the project um, on the fabric. Fabric Project, I'm in support of Fabric Project. Thank you. Elnora Bruton, 119 Northwest 6th Avenue, Delray Beach, and I support the BH3 Project. Please grant them the time that they need so that this project can be successful for our community. Thanks. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Virgil Williams. I am at 120 Northwest Avenue, there is Beach, Florida, 444. And I'm calling to let you guys know I support the show. Have a great day. Okay, my name is Sheila Johnson, and I live at 135 North District Avenue, and I support the, the business. And Hi, my name is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Glover. I live at 119 Northwest Savage Avenue, Gary Beach. I'm supporting the BH3. I'm supporting them. We need jobs, and um, I'm trying to support them. My name is uh, Francois Ali. I support the BH8 number. I and uh, my address is 135 Northeast First Avenue. My name is Kyle Gomez. I live in 1328 Lee Street, Delray Beach, 33444. I support the BH3 project. My name is Ruby New, address 375 Northeast 4th Street. Boca Raton, 33432, calling to support the BH3 and the fabric project. That's way too, way too long. And I am uh, the Rabbi Daniel Liebenson, CEO of BH3. I've known him for many years. He's a person of great um, integrity. And I fully support his endeavors, which I believe will be in the best interest of the Delray Beach community. Thank you. My name is Ilana Levinson, 15244 Lakes of Delray Boulevard, Delray Beach. I'm calling to leave a message about the fabric project, BH3. My comment is 
It is an exciting and wonderful project that will only benefit the whole community. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. I am Chantal Wentford Monhom, and I live in one in Southwest Tenth Avenue and Delaware, three three four four four. And I'm calling to say I I, I support the project B H three, and I, I will ask you to give them some time, please, some more time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Garth. Dean. I live at 15 Northwest 24th Street, Delray Beach, 33444. And I'm calling to say I support BH3 Project. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jacques Dean. I live at 695 on that Boulevard, Delray Beach, Ford, and I support BH3. My name is Jean Mewan. My address is. Uh, 13335, Delray Beach, Florida. I support the project BH3. My name is Claude Milford, 588 Northwest 48 Avenue. I support BH3 project. Uh, hi, uh, this is Alex Demius, address 4426, Brendan Drive, Delray Beach, Florida. Three, three, four, four, five, and I support the H three project in Delhi. Good afternoon. My name is Dean Joseph, and my address is one hundred eight Southwest Ninth Avenue on the Mexic, and I support the BH three project. My name is Byron Miller. I live at 318 Southwest 5th Avenue in the city of Derry Beach. I support BH3 Project. Thank you. Hi, my name is Max Peter, and I'm the owner of the 32 North 6th Avenue. And I own big part of the 600 blocks and I need to talk to somebody from the CRA you know because uh, I know you don't want to buy me but you don't want to sell me and uh, it's a situation over there and we cannot develop something and, uh, CRA is lacking the whole black over there to develop you know, really it's not right and we can talk if we can sit with somebody. I appreciate it very much. Please call me back. It's 954 242 1920. And about the company that you want to develop across the street, if you can help them, give them more time. Because I understood from them, they do have public online already. And what's true, what's not, I don't know. I think you can give them more time to develop. Okay, with me. Thank you and have a great day. Bye bye. Hi, my name is Adrian Rodriguez Hernandez. I live at Alta Congress. This Congress drives 250 Delray. I support the BH3 project. Whitney Simon. 511 Jekyll Drive, Delray Beach, Florida, the zip code 33444. I support Project BH3. Oh, okay. Demetrius McFadden, address 206 Southwest 12th Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida. Project BH3. Hmm? I support it. That's it. Hi, my name is Nancy Cannon. I live at 200 Northeast 2nd Avenue. I'm calling in in support of DH3 and their updated plan 
And um, I hope you will approve an extension because I think they're the right developer for this location. I like the changes they made and I think it's time to get that area going. Thank you so much and please support the plan. Thank you, bye-bye. Hi, my name is Lucy Larner and I live in uh, Delray Beach at 401 East Linton Boulevard, apartment 358. And I am calling with really strong support for the fabric Public, uh, BH3 and um, and what you're going to, their updated plan and we also um, would like to support the approval of the extension. Um, the developer is doing amazing things and uh, feel very strongly that this is so uh, the time to have uh, something like this go on it's for Northwest, Southwest and uh, thank you, thank you for what you're doing and um, community is great, but keep Delray great. Bye. Yeah, yeah, my name is John Frank McClinahan, and my number is 23 South 89th Street, Delray Beach, 33444. And I'm um, from Forget B A G. B O G. My name is uh, Inoel. I will support the project of the Delhi Beach. Uh, I will inform the project project for the Delhi Beach. I'm very very happy for the project. Good evening, Yvonne Odom, three nine zero five, Lonesome Boulevard, Delhi Beach, Florida. Well, I'm still re reminding you that running the city as a commissioner, the five of you is your primary job and deserves your full attention. The duties of the CRA can easily be done by commissioners appointed by you, other than yourself, to run the awesome business of the CRA. The city commission has the final approval anyway. I again urge you to return the CRA board to an independent board. However, that's not why I'm here this morning. I am here and my main focus is to encourage you to approve the plan laid out by your selected developer. You chose them, now you should support their efforts and strongly encourage them to work with the community to work the vision of the community and I believe they will do that. This does not have to be adversarial. You chose them, now you need to support them. This is no time to start all over again. Once again, I thank you for your service and I thank you as always. My name is Chuck Ripley. I live at 210 Northwest 2nd Avenue and I have the privilege of being the chair of WARC. I will not speak in favor nor against the BH3 project, but will provide feedback and observations and hope you will consider some of what I have to say. First and foremost, there is this notion that the community is desperate and in a rush for commercial development on West, Agal on West Atlantic Avenue. Nothing is farther from the truth. Don't get this twisted. We're not looking for development that will push us out our neighborhood. We are, however, looking for development that will provide neighborhood serving businesses like a grocery store, bank, and pharmacy. Development that provides housing options that will also include residents of the set. We're looking for development built by a developer with a social consciousness meaning a developer willing to build a project in which both the developer and set residents benefit financially. A developer that has taken the time to build trust and authentic relationship with set leadership. Now to this project. I support the proposed grocery store in the 600 block. Of course I do. It's the same proposal that Walk and Mayor Glickstein promoted in 2016. And if the city commission did not interfere back then, 
Publix will be breaking ground in 2022. I support the design that BH3 showed me for 700 and the 800 block. This is much more compatible with the set transformation plan than the original proposal. However, given the number of times the design has changed, there is no reason to believe what they're proposing now is what we will receive. So if you decide to move forward with this project, please consider putting clawback mechanisms in place so this is just not another bait and switch. If you move forward, please inoculate the public's project so that the community don't miss out on this for a second time. And if you decide not to move forward with BH3, I would like you to consider to first release an RFP for a grocer in the 600 block. It is my hope that Publix will respond. They were ready in 2016, so there is no reason to believe they aren't ready now. And then release an RFQ as opposed to an RFP for the 7 and 800 block. It's just going to give you, as a commission, more options. And finally, please resist politicizing this project once again. Enough is enough. That's all. Thank you. Next on the agenda, uh, next on the agenda is uh, consent agenda. That's true. We do have members of the public oh, here sorry, that have come me. Yes, we have someone from the public who would like to add another comment. I don't know who it is. Okay. Please state your name and address. Max Van Arnhem, 265 Northeast 5th Ave. Um, I just want to um, ask the commission if they thought the um, RFP process was uh, fair for the other bidders considering how many times the, the, um, the current plans have changed five or six times over. Um, can we trust this process and where does that leave the next RFP process? Um, considering that, you know, what wins seems to be renderings, pretty pictures, and then changes countless times over again. So I just wanted to put that out there and thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. If that is all of the comments from inside the building, inside the meeting, and all that called in, we will proceed now to the uh, consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Call the roll, please. Vice Chair Adam Frankel? Yes. yes. Vice Chair, Vice, Deputy Vice Chair Angie Gray? Yes. yes. CRA Commissioner Ryan Boylston? Yes. Commissioner Kelsey Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Julie Cassell? Yes. Chair Shirley Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Shelley Petrolio? Yes. Thank you. And now we will move to item 9C. First, we'll uh, hear from Executive Director Renee Jettison. Yes, thank you. All right. Just an update, we're still working on the internet just for everybody here. Thank you for your patience today. So this is an item, um, a request we received from BH3 Management re related to their development of the Southwest 600 through 800 blocks of West Atlantic Avenue. Excuse me, Renee, yes. do speak up just a Oh, minute. sure, sure. Thank you. All right, so this is an item to um, discuss a request letter that we received from BH3 Management related to their development of the 600 through 800 blocks of West Atlantic Avenue. We have Mr. Neil Schiller, who represents BH3 here today to make a presentation. Before turning the floor to him, I'd like to make a few remarks. Okay. So for the record, we issued an RFP for the development of these properties shown on the screen on August 21st, 2018. And there were certain priority uses 
that were identified in the 2012 West Atlantic Needs Assessment. Um, and this is shown here. Just in summary, we were looking for a full service grocer of no less than 2,000 square feet, health wellness facilities, pharmacy, financial institution, family social entertainment, office retail, and service uses. Let's fast forward to now. We are now in a purchase and sale agreement with BH3 Management, and this slide shows the list of the project description based on B, the purchase and sale agreement that we have with BH3. At this point, I'd like to ask DJ just to give us a rundown of the critical dates of the purchase and sale before turning the floor over to Mr. Schiller. Good afternoon, members of the CRA board. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon. As indicated by your executive director, this progress started with the issuance of a RFP in August of 2018. She also indicated we're currently under contract with BH3. That original purchase and sale agreement was entered into in April 22nd, 2019. We presently have three amendments. And before you uh, consider the item this afternoon, only for discussion, I wish to emphasize from a legal standpoint, there is no action to be taken today. This is a discussion item, please. Therefore, you will not be entertaining any motions, but you will potentially re reach a consensus, but you uh, will not be rendering a final decision. As indicated, there are specific components in the purchase and sale agreement. A grocery store is one residential component consisting of 165 units, residential community space, retail and professional office space, public office space, parking spaces, and two structured parking garages, workforce housing. Under the purchase and sale agreement, I wish to remind you all, I know you're mindful of it, that section 1.14 states that any variance in the components greater than 10% requires this board's approval. The original purchase and sale agreement had key performance states. It's structured to pre require performance by the developer. There is an application date that was originally 210 days subsequent to the effective date, which again was April 2018. By terms of the amendment, that was extended 270 days. The approval date was, is 365 calendar days subsequent to the application date, and that approval date is approaching us. That is January 18th, 2021. There is also built into the purchase sale agreement a termination date, which is 300, excuse me, 720 days subsequent to the effective date, and that is in April 2021. That, is, that summarizes the status of the legal relationship between BH3. I just want to emphasize again, this is for discussion only this afternoon. Thank you. May, may I ask, uh, excuse me, before you start, Neil. I have a date on the chart that says no later than Saturday, April, I'm sorry, January 16th, 2021. Is that a typo or? No, ma'am, it would be rolled over to the following Monday since that's not a business day. Okay. I believe there, therefore the approval date is January 18th, 2021. Very good for, for clarification and for the record. Thank you. Neil, you have the floor. Madam Chair? Yes, I'm the Wi Fi is now working, so just wanted okay. to let everyone know who has computers. And the presentations are available on our website and on through the agenda if you want to view it on your screen. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. That a help for you? Do you need a few seconds? Do you need a few seconds now? While you're doing this, uh, doing that rather, can the um, commissioners, Commissioner Gray, Commissioner Frankel, can you hear? Yes. yes. Commissioner Frankel. Okay. Yes. yes. That, very good. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon. As you know, my name is Neil Schiller with the law firm of Saul Ewing, Arnstein and Lair, located at 515 North Flagler Drive in West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm here today representing BH3 Management LLC. And with me today are Daniel Levinson, Gregory Friedman, Taylor Levy, who is 
missing? Uh, Zach Perdo and Avram New, all from BH3, and we're all here to answer any questions that you may have. Um, before we begin, I just really want to thank uh, your staff. Uh, your staff has been so accommodating to us, and um, especially with setting up this room today, and I really appreciate that. Uh, secondly, for those that celebrate, Happy Hanukkah. It starts in a few hours. And uh, I just want to go through uh, a quick project history, give you the project update, um, talk about amending the purchase and sale agreement, and then end with the conclusion. So uh, great minds think alike. Uh, Renee wanted to go through the history, and so do I. Um, as you know, August 21st, 2018, the RFP was issued. It sought a general overview, a conceptual site plan, conceptual renderings, basic floor plans, and anticipated uses. Um, January 29th, 2019, uh, BH3 was selected. And this was the, what they were selected on. At the West, so the January 2019, uh, you see a couple of the renderings and you see the different aspects of the plan. This was, as you know, our concept plan per the requirements of the RFP. However, these numbers were baked into the purchase and sale agreement as the project. This is, again, just for your reference, a conceptual site plan. I know that the staff included um, all of the uh, previous renderings and site plans that were submitted. As you know, uh, we came back to this board in February 2020. Uh, we actually submitted a full site plan application for this project known as Fabric. Uh, we increased, uh, we, our increases or decreases were within that 10% limit that your attorney previously spoke about. And as you can see, uh, the architecture and the design on the right hand side of the screen. And here is the site plan that went along with that uh, fabric plan that um, is still in process with the city. So what happened? Um, we've heard from the community. A lot of, we've, we've heard from the community. We've heard from this board. I want to bring up Zach Perdo, who's led our community outreach efforts to talk a little bit about our community outreach. I know that's been questioned. And uh, I will return. Go ahead, Zach. Hi, Commission. Thanks for having us. Zach Perdo. Um, so born and raised here in Delray, uh, was able to help spearhead the community outreach. Um, prior to the pandemic, uh, we did go to formal meetings. Uh, you know, not going to name all of them, but the elders meeting is a great example. Uh, we met with pillars of the community and different leaders uh, to get feedback that really shaped the project to where we're at today. Uh, from there, we would break out, do one-on-one -on -one meetings with different stakeholders. Uh, and, uh, you know, we continued those throughout this whole entire process. Uh, we did our own food distribution event, but we also contributed to other food distribution events. It was something that was being done during the pandemic, but uh, just as recently as uh, for Thanksgiving, we were uh, involved with EJS's Thanksgiving giveaway, and uh, that was an amazing event. He's an amazing guy. Um, we did the CRA workshop in June. Uh, we listened to you guys, we got your feedback, we really tried to hear, you know, what you liked, what you didn't, uh, and again, that's why we're here today. Uh, additional meetings with stakeholders, um, it, you know, as the pandemic, uh, you know, really got its clutches around us, it was ex harder and harder to meet with stakeholders. We actually were able to rely, and I'll talk about it in a second, uh, with the nine-week uh, meal distribution that we did. Uh, where we were able to meet community members over the course of nine weeks uh, and actually then uh, break out and get one-on-one -on -one meetings with these different stakeholders. Uh, and then uh, finally the neighborhood canvassing. Again, we wanted to have community meetings. We had one planned for uh, um, uh, the uh, Achievement Center. We wanted to do one over uh, at uh, the uh, Village Academy, do these larger events, but we weren't able to with the pandemic. Uh, so we went door to door because it was the safest way to actually get this project out into the community and get feedback from the community. Uh, and as you could hear, we had uh, over 150 phone calls. Uh, we partaken in multiple community events. Um, one of the first things that we did, uh, we actually had a uh, couple people from our team uh, go to the Spady Museum and we did a historical bus tour of the community 
with uh, uh, Charlene. Uh, that was an incredible experience. Uh, we participated in the Let's Move Del Rey uh, event uh, that honored the late, great uh, Zach Strawn. Uh, so we uh, were fortunate enough to meet him and speak to him uh, before his unfortunate passing. Uh, we've been in constant contact with the Roots Festival. We're trying to do something with them. We've donated to their fundraisers. Uh, we haven't yet been able to work with them, but we would love to. Uh, you know, we asked you guys, we asked other stakeholders what would be good events for us to go to. Commissioner Johnson had uh, uh, recommended going to the United Hands for Global Impact event. Thank you for that. Uh, went to that, uh, met different people in the community there, and also was able to talk to Commissioner uh, Gray there at that event as well. Um, we did this, uh, the DDA's Frog Alley events that they had. Uh, we did the first one. We actually brought our whole entire team to that first event. Uh, and then the second one was rained out, but we did uh, have a bunch of food left over, so we left it at the Spady Museum so the community could still enjoy that. Uh, and um, we've also partaken in, in the CRA's holiday celebration that they did in 2019. Uh, I guess this year, obviously, with the pandemic, they're not going to be doing it, but it was an awesome event. Thank you. Um, and then just recently, we did the Cars and Conversations event uh, with uh, uh, um, uh, Ricky Williams and uh, uh, Chris Caesar. Sorry, uh, he actually does Men Talk in the community. Great event, uh, and we sponsored the car that was given to a single mother uh, whose kids play on the Delray Rocks, which was a really great event, uh, and was able to meet people and talk about the project, and then again go to these one-on-one -on -one meetings because of the pandemic. So uh, we also sponsored uh, multiple events, but they were the nine meat meal distribution that we did with the CRA uh, gave over 3,000 meals away. Uh, we were there every Friday, um, and it was, it was a really humbling, great event. Uh, thank you to the CRA. We couldn't have done it without you. And uh, we also did Sunday music in the park. We did five events, and we had uh, wanted to continue it, but uh, the city is no longer allowing uh, public events because of COVID. Uh, so, uh, you know, we wanted to activate the space, and, and that's really what we're doing. So thank you to the CRA for this. Thank you, Zach. Um, and, and as you were just heard for the last few hours, Zach has done a phenomenal job of uh, getting our team out into the community and listen, listening to the community. And, and that's where, where we are today, the evolution of fabric and the evolution of our project. So what we heard from the community was that they didn't want to be a parking lot for East Atlantic Avenue. They were afraid of being pushed out of their own neighborhoods. They're concerned about the size of the proposed project that was three and four stories tall. Uh, we heard from you directly, some of you uh, multiple times directly, that you did not want a two-story grocer. And that I think we heard pretty convincingly that you wanted us to go back to the first set of architecture and the first design. And as we told you almost painstakingly about the impacts of COVID-19 and the pandemic on our process, it reduced the demand for rentals, but has increased the demand for workforce and affordable housing, as you can imagine. Uh, it's reduced demand for retail and food and beverage. Uh, and COVID conscious development with outdoor areas and outdoor dining are very popular now, as are grilled cheese sandwiches. Uh, but the new and improved fabric, the new and improved fabric, again, not only reflects the architectural style proposed, we've secured a national grocer as, uh, and again, October 12, 2020, that's when the letter of intent was signed. Um, that isn't that long ago, it's just a couple of months ago. We've incorporated a smaller frog alley that incorporates water features and open space on the 7 and 800 blocks while providing a really unique destination in the Northwest Southwest. I challenge you to find any water features as uh, vast as what we've proposed anywhere along Atlantic Avenue, east or west. Uh, the residential will be 100% workforce and affordable housing. The 69 units proposed will be 
100% workforce and affordable housing. And we think that that will allow members of the community to live in this project, not just work at it, not just come and, and shop at the grocery store or come to the restaurants, but live there. Um, open and green space has been created for residents of the community and the community. Uh, community seeking desires. We've heard not only from the RFP, but from the speakers that there is a need for medical uses there, there and not there, in the community. There's a need for financial institutions. There's a need for pharmacies. There's a need for community meeting space. And again, we are already talking uh, to national retailers about locating on the 800 block. So, as some of you have seen, I'm ready to show you the pictures. Uh, this is a photo of the grocer looking at the 700 block, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to see, but the first thing you will notice is that the, uh, the, on the 700 block, the retail fronting Atlantic Avenue is just one story tall. When you move back, and I'll move back uh, in the slides, you will get to three-story residential building. But first, we're going to start at the 800 block. So the 800 block has two principal buildings right on Atlantic Avenue. On the west end of the 800 block, you have a one-story building that we envision for a financial institution, a pharmacy, a drugstore, et cetera. As you are looking head on to the office building, this is a three-story office building with retail uh, on the first floor, two-story offices, and back past the office building, you again see that one-story commercial uh, retail uh, on the 700 block. And there it is. Looking at the 700 block, again, if you get confused, you can see that red arrow sort of pointing where we are in, in, the, in the project. So this is the 700 block. This is one story on, on Lanik, that's retail, restaurant, commercial, and then a three-story uh, residential building that is two stories of residential, and the first floor is parking. Here is another view of right into that 700 block. You see the residential building sort of in between the two retail and commercial buildings. You see all of the activity that we anticipate there. This would be the entrance or one of the entrances to what we're calling Frog Alley. And there is Frog Alley. This is from the 600 block looking west through Frog Alley. You notice that all the retail and restaurant are located right on Atlantic Avenue on the left hand on the right hand side, excuse me. And on the left hand side, we have our residential. You see very clearly what we're doing with the water there and creating fountains that run alongside the residential building. This will do a couple of things: bring water to this side of Atlantic Avenue, which is so exciting. But more importantly, those uh, fountains will serve to buffer some of those impacts from Frog Alley. And there again, you see the length uh, where you see the residences at Fabric. Those planters are also uh, to, the, to the left and right of them. Those are actually water features with full working fountains. And again, um, the architecture and the design, as you'll notice, uh, greatly uh, reflects the original uh, concept design. And here is something that is brand new that you haven't seen before. We've included the development of five townhomes at the south end of the 600 block. These are, again, workforce and affordable. Uh, at some point in the future, if there's a desire for fee simple, I think that's something that our group is definitely open to. Site plan. So uh, there are three aspects of the site plan, 600 block, 700, and 800. The 600 block is where the grocer would be. Why? As we've told you in the past, that block has the most contiguous property. That is the block that will fit the grocer and the grocer's surface parking, which we believe is about uh, 150 spaces. Uh, I'm going to zoom in to the 7 and 800 blocks right now to talk about the ground floor, second floor, and third floor plans. 
Starting on the 700 block, you can see very clearly where the residential building is vis-a-vis -vis the Frog Alley, the water features, and the retail and commercial that front Atlantic Avenue. And then you can see um, also the 800 block that has uh, retail fronting, uh, retail fronting Atlantic Avenue. You have that one story uh, block that is meant for a financial institution, a pharmacy, or, or a myriad of the same. And then you have some open space. That, that middle arrow where Frog Alley is pointing is, is incorrect, and I apologize for that. That is uh, basically building. So there, there is no through way there to connect. But there is about 5,000 or more square feet of public space uh, in between the office building and the one-story out parcel. You can also see very clearly the uh, areas, I don't know if this will work, the areas uh, that the CRA does not own or we do not have control over. Instead of building physical improvements next to them, uh, we have done something unbelievable. We have given these people waterfront property now. And not only will them waterfront property, these are lakes that can be used by everybody in the community, uh, and hopefully uh, they will be. Next slide. There's our second floor plan. On the residential, you see how all of the units line the center. The center is really unique. That is an open and green space that we are uh, leaving open for the residents, everybody, it's common area. But then what's even better is that these units that's, that are around the common area are going to get their own private yards. And you can see it very clearly here. That's an amenity that is not seen a lot in workforce, affordable housing, and that's something that uh, we think will set our project apart and make it even more integrated into the community. On the left-hand side, you see the second floor of our office building. You see that it's, it's uh, you know, 11,000 square, 300 square feet, if I remember correctly, per floor. It can be chopped up into different spaces um, to accommodate those small businesses, local businesses, and incubators. Uh, same thing with 800 block. Again, that's 11,300 square feet of third floor office space. And on uh, the residential side, on the 700 block, you can see how the units um, open up into, uh, or have open access, open air access uh, to that green space that was created on the first floor. So you also show, so, uh, we also show some of those units having some balcony space, which is great, more outdoor space for people to, to use and congregate. So the inevitable question is, how much are you changing? And, and here we are. So we have residential units that were originally proposed at 165. We are, before you today, proposing 69 units. Why? Because, again, we've lowered heights. We've lowered densities. Uh, commercial office. That commercial office has actually grown by about 4,000 square feet. Why? Because we see the need for local community office space, local community meeting space, and um, we believe that this is a, a very solid plan. Workforce housing, we were originally at 40 units total at 24% of, uh, of the number of units being proposed. We are now at 100% of the units proposed. I cannot stress this enough. Those 69 units will be workforce and affordable housing. The retail obviously took a major hit. That is 43,300 proposed. We are at 19,586. And it's pretty obvious why. The pandemic has shown that brick and mortar stores uh, have a lifespan. They've shown that uh, restaurants have had to pivot and are downsizing and has really thrown the retail and commercial market into a tailspin. Parking spaces. So originally, the parking spaces were whatever our number was, whatever the, the parking uh, required number was, plus an additional 206 spaces. 
Well, now we're coming before you today with 352 spaces. And we're doing this for a couple of reasons. Number one, the community feedback was overwhelming that they didn't want all these cars in their community. Number two, when we decided to put the 600 block, or put the grocer on the 600 block, which is really the only block it could have been on because of the, the amount of property, and when it was decided that that would no longer be a two-story uh, grocer and it would be a one-story grocer with surface parking, it became difficult to find space to put all those additional cars. Um, lastly, green space and open space, we were at 40,000 square feet. Uh, we are now down to 33,000, almost 500 square feet of open space, which is pretty spectacular, seeing as though our, our heights have come down pretty significantly. And then grocery space, we originally proposed 33,000 uh, square feet of grocery space. Uh, as you know, with the grocer that we've selected, they have their own development team. Uh, we have met with staff with that grocer, um, and I believe the grocer is coming back to us, and we will meet with staff hopefully in the next couple of weeks to solidify a plan moving forward with a design uh, that would be deemed acceptable to, so far, your zoning staff, and then we'll obviously bring it to you for approval. So BH3 is the fastest to turn the dirt. Uh, we're delivering a, a project that the community wants. You heard that pretty loud and clear for the first hour and a half, two hours of this meeting. Um, not only will our national grocer actually end the food desert that's in the Northwest Southwest, but this particular grocer brings jobs and they give back to the community. 100% workforce and affordable units. These are real new housing opportunities for residents, not only of the city, but residents of the Northwest Southwest area. Low rise, less intense development. You can see the dramatic difference from the three, four, and even five stories proposed in the original concept to now the one and three stories proposed today. We did that because the community wanted less density and they wanted it to be compatible. One of the speakers, I think it was the last caller, said this project is more compatible with our community and I think he even said that he supported the design. We are, and again, community support, I mean, Zachary, Zach, Zach did a great job, I have a Zachary son. Uh, so Zach did a great job with our community support, but I think it speaks volumes. 150 plus people calling to uh, voice their support is, uh, is pretty significant. And I thank you all for taking your time and attention to listening to all of those calls. We're seeking a 10 month extension from our approval date, which is January 16th or January 18th. To 2021. As you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And uh, if nothing that has been come, come from this pandemic, it's that we, oh, I think a lot of Americans trust Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci has called this the worst pandemic in 100 years. Now, we've previously talked about force majeure. We haven't sent a letter demanding force majeure or asserting force majeure, but I, I would be remiss not to include uh, just a mention of force majeure at this point. There are some delays that occurred, not on the city side. I want to make that very clear, if, especially if Anthea is listening, but I want to, but there were delays that we've had and, and they were related to the pandemic. Um, and to make our 10 month extension and to get it done, uh, we will rely on the CRA and the city for help. So the amendment to the PSA, we would be amending the project description, which occurs, appears in two different sections of the purchase and sale agreement. Six, you know, I don't have to break it down for you, but this is, this is what would be the new uh, part, project description. 
everything that I've told you and presented thus far. Project phasing. So we would ask to amend the project phasing so that we would be able to build uh, the start construction of the 700 block within 60 calendar, calendar days of getting a building permit and then can start construction of the 800 block, which is 120 calendar days after all of the government approvals are being issued. We feel that uh, that is more realistic build schedule for us. Uh, in addition, uh, the, the construction of the grocer will, uh, again, we will get with staff and we need to better understand the grocer's timetable and we will come back to you with that. The, uh, this is how we've broken up our 10-month extension of the approval date. Uh, and that extension of the approval date would trigger extensions of the other dates as well. Uh, the site plan preparation application, we believe, will take six months to submit. Uh, we believe technical advisory committee, based on our past experience with the, uh, our, our previous fabric plan, uh, in response to those comments, will take about two months and then we'll have a certified site plan. Uh, and then we believe that the site plan review process and approval will also take about two months. This will go to SPRAB, and then if uh, appealed, it will go to the City Commission. So in conclusion, uh, a national grocer is committed. They're ready, willing, and able to be here in Delray Beach. They've already started meeting with your staff. This is a smaller site plan with amenities for the Northwest Southwest based on city, CRA, and community feedback. 100% workforce and affordable housing is a huge benefit, especially in these uncertain economic times. Again, the architecture and design fits into the community, as some of your callers said. Uh, welcomes people into the city of Delray Beach and highlights the Northwest Southwest area will draw people this project will draw people it will draw investors it will draw residents and tourists to this area of the city and the uses will reflect the true community uh, needs somebody on the phone and the call said please ask the, I think it was Ms. Odom please make sure the developer continues to work with the community well, I want to see Jack, uh, Zach, excuse me, continue his amazing community outreach. And that is a promise that we're more than willing to make to you today. We have done a, a, a tremendous job going from zero to 150 phone calls uh, during a pandemic. We feel that this, is plan, this plan is not only uh, viable, it's realistic, and it is doable within the time frame that we're committing to today. And so with that, we're happy to answer any questions. We, we hope that you will give your staff the consensus to negotiate a Fourth Amendment to us, and then we'll bring it back to you. And if, again, if you have any additional feedback, we're all ears. We want to make this project as, ref as reflective of the community and, and its needs as possible. And with that, I, I thank you so much, Renee. Uh, Mr. Duty, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Schiller. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. I would like to ask uh, consensus for th of the, I'm sorry, is, do you have anything else you'd like to say, no, Renee? No, to the board. DJ? Mr. No, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry, thank you. I'd like to ask if we could have uh, Commissioner Frankel go first because uh, it is the holiday for him and it might be that he won't be able to continue the entire conversation or discussion. So, Commis Commissioner Fankel, are you there? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Yes, yes. We're, we're going to have a discussion. We're, I'm going to go down the line with Commissioner Frankel uh, starting first. I'd like you to give me your opinions of uh, what's being requested of us. And at the end, then we will have a consensus or not to move forward on an amendment, a Fourth Amendment, or not a Fourth Amendment. So continue, Commissioner Frankel. I appreciate that, Madam Chair. And first, Mr. Schiller, thank you. 
I'm not I'm sure, sure what I've seen more this week. Your, your references to grilled cheese sandwiches. Or a few thumbs up. But thank you very much. Nonetheless. I have a question for you. Renee, I know in the history of uh, in the last uh, not a few months, or I should say several months, since uh, you were the executive director, you, 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 you in fairness, have had uh, some issues with the development. Is that fair to say? No. I think delays in communication, probably, but um, you know we have several emails. I know there's COVID, so there's been several issues with that. But um, you know, I would say there's been delay in communication. What, 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 as the executive director, do you have any positions you'd like to take? Well, I think that at this point, you know, the question really is, is if we want to enter well, I think that at this point, you know, the question really is if we want to entertain a Fourth Amendment or not. If we do want to negotiate that, you know, by the board. And if we do, you know, staff is here to make recommendations on how to maybe, you know, tighten things up, maybe get some concessions to benefit the CRA more, um, you know, and also, I guess, more responsive. I know it's been difficult, but I, I do feel that we should have more of a close relationship um, going forward if we do entertain a Fourth Amendment. So I would request that, definitely. Um, this is a big project for the community. This is a big project for the city. And, you know, I think more communication would make us all feel that way and a little bit better. Um, I, I appreciate that. that. And, and, and I, I, I totally agree with what you said. While it's, you know, built, built, built by Biden, we've, we've seen, seen it several, several times. times. And I believe uh, uh, all the members of the board are speaking for that. Here. Here. It, it, as well as, as, as members of the community, I'm very I'm anxious for something to occur. Now, I understand that COVID has created difficulties, I get that. But my position would be if this extension would be granted, and I'm going to ask Mr. Zudi to tell me if this is improper. I'm sorry, sir. Here's what I'm going to ask you if you can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay. If the extension is given by my board, could there be certain uh, clauses in the extension that would allow the executive to write back for the reasons you can stated? Would, would be able to bring this back for the time of And it helps us this is going on the way because. The last thing we need to be doing with this is to wait nine months and two weeks and get another one. So, you know, I really find it difficult to win another extension of this life without such protections for the board and the community in the city. So, uh, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Is that all, Commissioner Frankel? Yes, yes ma'am. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. Commissioner Gray, um, she's having trouble hearing. Okay. So, what can we do about I that? I can't hear you. And we can't understand you either, uh, Commissioner. I don't know. Is this some technical? Well, I, th I can just repeat. I, from what I understand, Commissioner Franklin, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're saying that if we do grant the extension, that you're, you're seeking if there's any sort of, um, I guess, protections that can be put into the Fourth Amendment negotiated for the CRA and the community and the city itself um, going forward, if that's correct. That, 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 that might be the, the one thing I would say uh, publicly is I have the utmost faith in our executive director. I find it fair, fair but, 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 to, to all of us, including this one. But, but like, like I said, I said before, before, I don't know how long I'm going to be in nine months, 
covering for this board and for other board work with reason number five, which is the whole Would that be a committee or covering board? If that's the will of the board, yes, and we can come to some terms that are fair for all, then that's fine. Thank you. Commissioner Gray, were you able to hear enough of um, the comments from Vice Chair uh, Frankel? Not the last comments. Um, was helpful when we made the Okay. Do you, do you still need to hear, Renee, just, can you repeat? Just, just, Okay, so the last um, comments from Commissioner Frankel. Um, from what I understood, he doesn't want to have another delay and, and like we had before of a meeting and then have another meeting to talk about things in a long delay before coming back to the board. So, um, you know, I guess he's saying that staff, executive director, fair and able to, you know, work with the developer, so would like that. Very good, thank you. Was that acceptable, Commissioner Gray? Thank you so much. Thank you. And out of respect to you, if you would like to, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Mun, uh, Frankel. And if you should have, to, if you should need to leave the meeting, I can quite understand. I'd like to wish you a happy Hanukkah, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. If there's nothing else, thank Commissioner. You so much. Very good, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, Commissioner Gray, I'm going to give you the next. Um, opportunity to tell us what you're thinking. Uh, yes. Thank you so now we're having trouble hearing you. If there's something a little closer to the microphone or whatever, would you like to try it again? Yes, yes. I just want to say, say thank, thank you to everyone that called in and in your opinion on this project. Um, my concern is the project that has been in the country. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt Commissioner Gray, where it was great there for about a half a second. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to speak with the House of Maybe, is it possible we could have her call in? We'll have another commissioner speak, and then we'll have you call in on the telephone if that's acceptable to you. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to start from uh, the next one to my left. Okay. Commissioner. Sure, I just wanted to um, say, first of all, um, thank you guys so much for putting on the, um, the uh, presentation that you did. Thanks for the callers. Um, I don't think there was, I don't know if I've heard one in there that didn't uh, appreciate or approve um, what you guys are, are presenting. Um, I do have some concerns. I wanted to ask about the force majeure. I wanted to ask the city, uh, I'm sorry, the CRA attorney, um, is there grounds for delays due to the force majeure as Mr. Um, Schiller put forward? But they have not asked for it. That, that would be a decision by the CRA board. The contract specifically requires the force majeures to be approved by the CRA. Okay, so that's not something that's an automatic if they Correct. decide to yes. ask for it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, respectfully, uh, it, upon receipt of the earlier letter, I responded, uh, tried to outline the CRA's position. Would you speak up, please? Um, we're um, the, sorry with the mask. It, very quickly, the purchase and sale agreement specifically contains language that in the event of any force majeure being asserted by the developer that is subject to the CRA approval. Okay, and um, I just wanted to make a couple of points. Um, you know, there are some very, very um, interesting and attractive uh, features on the new um, project uh, that uh, you know, obviously, I would think that the majority of the commission, uh, the, the CRA commission here, would would um, would welcome. At the same time, we are two years, almost two years into this, and we are at square one, and that's very concerning for me. Um, you know, one of the reasons that I didn't support this project moving forward was because of the fact that I really knew that that West Atlantic area needed that catalyst, and we are sitting here now, two years later without really at a point, we're still talking about and discussing what we're going to do. Um, I understand that things have changed in the marketplace. It's understandable. That happens all the time. 
Um, in another six, eight months, it could be flipping again. We don't know. And that might be another reason to delay and come in with a different project. I think that the, um, the project that we had originally was proved. That was the one I thought we were going forward with. Obviously, we were brought forward with a uh, change up that was not acceptable by the entire, or almost the entire board. And here we are again with another one, um, a change up. There, there are good things and there are bad things to what is being presented before us. Good for me is that 100% uh, you know, of the uh, workforce housing or, or um, you know, workforce housing and affordable units is, is tremendous. That's a great positive um, feature, change. The green space going down a few thousand uh, feet, I understand. Um, it's not, I don't think it's going to make or break a difference. It was 40,000 going to 33. Um, the residential impact, obviously the number of units is going down. Office space going up, we can use that, so that's not a big deal for me. Retail is very concerning because this is the connector from east to west Atlantic. So I know that there are storefronts on the front, but the project itself is, is changing uh, pretty drastically from a retail project into more of a um, housing development and uh, slash uh, 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 office development. And, and I don't know that that's exactly what we want to be seeing on West Atlantic. Get it that there are retail along the avenue, which is important, and this project goes very deep into the community, and so that's one of the reasons why it can be deemed, you know, acceptable. Um, the parking was one of the main reasons, if I recall, and I know some of you were not on the commission at the time that we originally um, approved this, was one of the main reasons why we chose BH3 over all the other projects. It was that parking element of having 200 additional spaces for the city's use on top of, I believe it was about 500 spaces that were required for the um, developer. So there was approximately 700, I'm, I'm pulling from my memory, but approximately 700 spaces. Now, I know that that is overwhelming and that's parking garages and so on and so forth, and there was probably pushback by the community. I can understand that. But that was the genesis for why we chose to go with BH3 over the other projects. And I believe that that, from my perspective, opens us up to um, a problem, um, potential problem for somebody who didn't get the project originally because of what we chose to go forward with, and now we're sitting on an entirely different project. So that's very concerning, and I know that that's going to be the legal help that we're going to have to make sure that we're not going to be getting ourselves into any kind of a situation where we're, we're asking for a lawsuit because we've changed it so much, and we are doing an entirely different project um, from what was presented originally to now. Um, there is another question that I had with respect to the uh, publics. This is the same group that was involved originally, Pasadena. Um, is that, uh, are they going to be asking for holdups? Maybe, um, Mr. Schiller, you might be able to answer that because originally they had, um, they, they were not going to build until they had a two year time frame or a three year time frame, from what I remember, um, prior to your being involved. So is there anything like that in their, in their um, requirements? And uh, thank you for the, the question. May, may I answer, Madam yes, Chair? Please. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, again, Neil Schiller, we've been in contact with the grocer. We asked for a build schedule and a, and a schedule of dates in preparation for this meeting. Um, I was on the phone with them yesterday. They have not gotten approval from their internal committee yet, but those dates are forthcoming. Um, so I. That's the best answer to your question that I have. Okay. Thank you. My, my guess would be there probably is going to be a tie-up because that's what they did before, but regardless, unless we actually have that confirmed, excuse we don't me, know. Excuse me, we can't hear I'm that. I'm sorry. No, I was saying. Oh. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, update, um, go ahead. Would you like to speak? Sure. Sure. Certainly. Hi, Greg Freeman from BH3. You had asked about Pasadena Capital. Publix has uh, specific developers that are approved that build their stores for them. 
So Pasadena is not some third party, meaning when we were negotiating with Publix, they had us incorporate Pasadena because that's an approved builder. And also, as the board knows, there was a previous uh, submission by Publix from 2016 right. that was already approved, which they met with staff on to kind of tweak. So do we know if they would be jumping in and coming out of the ground right away or is, you know, once they get their approvals or are they going to ask for a window of, let's say, three years or five years, depending before no, they it's, actually No, it's, it's certainly not three to five years, but just, just to, to be clear, I think this was your prior point. You may the, remove the, your mask, sir, if we sorry. keep wearing. Okay. This whole project has been driven by the grocer, so you talked about, you know, being at ground zero. This LOI was signed in October of this year. We went out to dozens of grocers. A lot of them either went out of business or didn't want to be here. So having this grocer here has driven everything. So the design, the timing, everything has been driven by that grocer, which is from the calls, obviously, what the community, what's the most important to community, as the driver behind the RFP to begin with. Uh, so that's really the, the what's what's impacting everything. In terms of their timelines, you know, in our negotiations with them in the LOI, um, they have their timelines for getting approvals from from the city and, and their own approvals uh, for, for, for permitting, and they have those time frames. But it's not three to five years. The objective is that that they're constructing their building at the same time we're constructing ours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, so that answers that. Um, Hold on just a minute. Let me get to where I was. Okay, and so some of the, some, that, those were some of the good um, parts of it. Some of the negative parts, and, and this was one of the things that I need to ask, is that I noticed when you showed the picture of the grocer, it was a solid wall on Atlantic Ave, and there was no, no see-through, no shine-through. So is that going to be how that's going to look? Because... Uh, you know, I know that we have rules about having to have clear windows, and are we going to back, be back in that situation where we are not going to have that and have the same effect as we have up on federal? That, that's, a, that, that's a great question. Um, in our conversation with zoning staff, and uh, your executive director was on the phone also, um, Anthea uh, Giannotta has brought up that exact same oh, issue. Did, okay. um, so that is something that we've got, that the, the developer of the grocer has gone back to the grocer to determine the best way to, to deal with that. Uh, there was window glazing. There's a bunch of different things that you need to do on, on Atlantic Avenue. And so uh, the grocer, we took notes and they are, they're going back and, and reforming that. So okay. yes, they're addressing that. All right. Very good. I know that they, uh, you know, typically have windows they might have just had them over by where the you know the parking lot is not recognizing that we've got to have some clear story clear windows on atlantic so that it doesn't just look like it's a, a wall i think the benefit with this grocer is the fact that they've been through this process with the city before right they know what to expect and um which is going to make it easier getting them from approval to building Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And I also just wanted to um, mention that I do support the concern of my colleague who spoke first, uh, uh, Vice Chair uh, uh, Frankel, um, because uh, of the fact that we are two years in. I just don't know if we have the faith. Uh, I, I have the faith that it is going to get done. I know that there were some issues about whether or not we were going to release financials. Um, that would have definitely been a, a, a deal breaker for me, just so you guys know. Um, and um, and in addition to that, um, I think that there should be a penalty, a sizable one, if it's not if it's not at the point. If we decide to go forward, I think that what we need to do is to have something in there that would be a non-refundable um, type of a, a penalty, um, so that uh, th this is a kind of like a, a point at which you are moving forward or the city is going to get a nice down uh, windfall, and uh, we'll move. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the CRA, and we'll move on. That's the way. I, that's what I would support. If I might, just to amplify that, so you're suggesting that there be some consideration paid by the developer for the Fourth Without Amendment. Without a doubt, that there that it's actually put up, and basically that's what's writing the contract. Absolutely, and if it's not, if it's not at that point, there is no. Um, we need an extension. At that point in time, it's a, it's a. We are taking that money and then and making the decision go on. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and sizable. 
That's what I have to say. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Commissioner Petrolia. Is, uh, is Commissioner Gray on the phone? I have her on the cell phone. So okay, that's fine. Can... As long as we can hear her comments. Okay. Commissioner Gray, thank you for coming in, ta uh, dialing in. I'm sorry, can you hear me? You can. Go ahead, Commissioner Gray, you have the floor. No, it's not. Hello? Floor. Yes, you have the floor. Can you hear us? Uh, barely. Um, I'll try to go. We thank you, everyone. I'd just like to thank everyone that called in and uh, that voiced their opinion about this project. We definitely need a grocery store in our community. We have been needing it forever. Um, so I understand why the community and why we're excited. Uh, my, my guess, my question would be, are we guaranteed that we're going to be um, having a Publix to come? Because that's what my community was mainly um, in support of that it is a public. Do we know for sure? I couldn't hear whether someone had asked that question or not. May I answer? Yes, yes, whoever can answer the question has permission. Well, I'll, I'll just state that um, we ha the letter that we received requesting the extension and other things did not state public specifically. It said a grocer. We did have a phone call with Pasadena Capital. And as you mentioned, they're the builder for, for Publix. But the documents we have didn't state that. So if you guys, there's a green bag on the table, just, great, just so you know. But um, if there's anything more the developers will, you can add. But And, and to amplify that, the, the uh, our, our, the RFP and the contract just refer to grocer. There's no reference to any particular brand. I'm sorry, Renee, can you repeat? I, didn't, I couldn't hear. Uh, DJ said that their um, RFP and the um, contract just refer to a grocer, not a particular brand. And Neil was going to also comment, too. Thank you for the question, Commissioner Gray. Um, so one of the worst kept secrets of 2020 is that it is indeed Publix. Does that answer your question? He said the worst kept secret is that it is a Publix. Okay, so we have something in writing saying that it is indeed a Publix because that's what they're selling my company. No, ma'am, we do not. No, we do not. That's okay. So I, my oh, next question would be, why do my community all believe that there's a Publix coming because that's what they were sold on? Is that every caller mentioned a Publix? Uh, may I answer the question, Madam Chair? Whoever has the answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to I'm going to answer you, Commissioner Gray. Um, first off, there are a couple of reasons why it was in uh, the newspaper that this this site was a, was going to be a Publix. Additionally, we have a signed letter of intent with them dated October 12th, 2020, 2020. Uh, so it is new, and that is the grocer that we are moving forward with. That is the grocer that we have been in negotiations with throughout this whole time, along with some others. Uh, that is the grocer that, when the pandemic hit, stopped calling us back because they were renegotiating leases with their existing stores. And this is the grocer that hires local and that contributes to the local community. And so uh, we are putting it on the record today for the first time ever that it is indeed a Publix. And if you allow us to move forward, you will see a Publix. Commissioner Gray, did you hear? Um, I can barely hear. Um, for some reason, I can hear Nick much better. I'll have Neil speak into the phone. Do you want to repeat it, please? Commissioner Gray, can you hear me? OK. Yes, it's a Publix. We're putting it on the record that it's a Publix. It's the first time we've ever put it on the record. We have a signed letter of intent with them. It's dated October 12, 2020, and that is why your community is so excited. And we are excited because it is indeed a public, so it's a national grocer from Lakeland. Um, the 165 um, units, I'm really just a little disappointed that we have reduced those units drastically, being that we need so much housing 
um, not just in Delray Beach and the county and Florida in the state period, um, down to 69 units and 100% of those uh, you have on your your uh, on your presentation that there was workforce. Um, you were talking about affordable housing, which is a big, huge di- difference, which about probably about two to three hundred dollars more from workforce to affordable units, um, and that 165 to 69 units is a huge decrease. Um, I'm really concerned about that. Um, Frog Alley has been reduced um, a lot. That was one of the highlights for me. Um, The insurance, the fact that you're going to move forward, this project has changed so many times. And like you stated, our last caller, um, Mr. Ridley mentioned that, um, you know, we're not guaranteed that you're not going to come back and change this project again. I am concerned about the lawsuits that perhaps we may have because this is over 10 percent i do get it that we the commission have the opportunity to approve that um i'm not quite sure if you know we're gonna uh, go that route or not uh the less open space less retail space i get it um the amenities there's no pool no mention of the pool and some of the amenities that you have there you did talk about waterfront a pond or something but some of the amenities for the residents are no longer existing here so those are my my concerns um the parking i know you went from 700 and something to uh what is it now 350 i believe it is so there's really no parking for um the community the city or anything it's just strictly for this project correct Sorry. Commissioner Gray, this is Neil Schiller. I'm going to have uh, one of my clients, Greg Friedman, answer your question about the parking, okay? Hi, Commissioner Gray. Give us, I'll, please, I'll speak to the microphone please, as well. Please give us your name. And Greg Friedman from BH3. So just to continue on the, from the conversation, because there's a lot of talk about the density. The, up to your... Sorry, about the density, the grocer, and the parking. This all goes back to the grocer and the 600 block because density requires parking. The only place to put that parking, I mean, if you look at the original design of this project, the vast majority of the parking was on the 600 block. It was a big structure garage. We had Publix on the second level, and then we had parking even above Publix. The request for the grocer to be on the first floor and the demand by the grocer saying, hey, we won't go on the second floor, change that where you don't have the parking available. That's what forced the density down. We're developers. I think this is a profound moment in time where a developer is up before you saying, hey, we want to reduce density. We want to reduce height. We want to reduce structured parking. We're usually up before community boards asking for as as much as we can do. So while we would love to have 300 apartments, there's height limitations, there's density limitations, and there's parking requirements. So we'd love to give everyone what they want, but the reality is is that it starts and ends with the grocer. The grocer being on grade level dictates how much parking we have, as does height, and that's what limits the the, the density. So I just want to clarify that because there's a a question that we'd like more parking. There is nowhere to put the parking if you want the grocer. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Gray, were you able to hear most of that? Uh, Hold on, Commissioner Gray. We've lost you. We need to do something technical. Uh, yes, just uh, wanted to know again why we reduced the housing units dramatically. It's 165 units, so now 69 workforce uh, units. And what guarantee that, um, what type of percentage we're going to make sure we have for affordable if uh, 100% is, uh, is at 69? Why was it reduced so much with for the rentals, I mean, for the housing, um, instead of taking it somewhere else off of maybe the commercial spaces, I mean, retail spaces? Can you repeat the last part of the question? Mm-hmm. Retail, I wanted to know why did we choose to reduce the housing, which we need so des- desperately in Delray Beach, 
instead of within the, the rental spaces. I mean, the retail. I'm walking back to the microphone again. So again, just to, to restate the reduction in density for the apartments, which before were all market rate apartments with the exception of the, the limited workforce component, that is now all workforce and affordable. But that w again was driven by, by parking. We, we, we don't have the parking for all of that density, including all the retail that we had before as well. We don't have that parking because the grocer is going on grade level on the 600 block. That's, that's the driver of all of it. So I think, uh, I hope you follow that. In terms of the retail, we reduced retail, A, because we don't have the parking, and B, because retail is a, a toxic word uh, in the current environment with r several retailers going out of business. And it all goes back to the viability of the project to actually get it done. Yeah. For me, the, the housing is extremely important, but um, okay, thank you. Those are all my questions for right now. Just really concerned about the fact that um, we're going to be continuing to move forward, um, no more delays. Um, if we do decide to go in, go with uh, or move forward, I definitely would like to have some more, um, you know, plenties in place. Um, to make sure that we're not going to be another two years or we may get a, the grocer here and, and then they may say, okay, we don't want to build right now. We're going to build in another two to three, four years after gentrification is here. Um, I just, uh, yes, those are my remarks for right now, um, Madam Chair. Yeah, the, the grocer doesn't have the luxury of waiting for five years, number one. And number two, the, the prior approval was for market rate housing, and this is now workforce and affordable housing. I, I'm, I'm going to pass the phone back yeah, to you. I, I understand market rate um, housing, um, so I'm a realtor, I understand market rate, but I also understand that the workforce housing is just as expensive. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Commissioner Gray. Thank everyone for trying to work through and fight through these technical difficulties. It, they're just amazing. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Cassell. You are next. I'll start off by saying, is that You're Rebecca? Welcome. You're welcome, Commissioner Gray. Thank you. Please hang on. Don't, don't hang up on us. <laughs> Commissioner Cassell, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, first, Zach, uh, I was at some of your community events, and I do really appreciate everything that you did for the community. And, you know, you did a lot, and I, and I appreciate that. And I'll say this very honestly. Whenever we engage um, with anyone in a contract, I am first and foremost want to see them be successful and do anything I can to help. But I really honestly share the concerns um, that have been voiced here today, and I'll go through. My list is probably going to be similar, but I want you to know where we're coming from um, because we are still, you know, we are at two years, and uh, it's news. Do we have a letter of intent from Publix? Because I did not think that we did. The CRA staff does not, but as BHP the said, the CRA staff does not have a letter not, of intent. We do not have receipt of the, a copy of the LOI, no, ma'am. See, I, I guess one of the things that would concern me generally is when you started engaging with Publix, the project was considerably larger. And I know that Publix wants to wait and be the third part of the process after this, after the after you start in the ground. Well, that's my understanding. And so, because obviously they need the business in order to function. But now that we're reducing it down significantly, I'm concerned and I would like to know that Publix is committed to this project as it currently sits on the table. Because it's not unreasonable to think a reduction in the housing might put them in a different situation. Thank you for the uh, question, Commissioner Casal. Um, yes, Publix is committed to the site. We have a binding signed letter of intent with them October. It's, it Why don't we have it though? It's December. That's, it's confusing. So, so uh, once we deliver the letter of intent to the city, it becomes public record, which would void some confidentiality agreements. Right. because. Um, we, what we would be willing to do 
is to uh, you know bring the agreement and, and and let your council and let your executive director review it, but from a um, what we, we need to avoid uh, giving it to you because that would create some issues. I understand, but ninety two, I think ninety two of those calls were all about public, so it's 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 something that's relevant to the residents. Um, um, let me see. Um, I share the concerns about the process, uh, the reduction of the retail, because the intent of this is to be the connector to the downtown. Um, so it does concern me as well, uh, a reduction in retail. I understand, no, you may, okay. that we're in COVID and, and it looks different, but at the conclusion of this, we'll be beyond COVID. Sure, and I and I understand your concern. Again, um, Neil Schiller, for the record, I understand your concern. But don't forget, it's not just about retail driving people. It's right. the residences there. It's the thirty some odd thousand square feet of office. So people will be working there. People will be going there to those offices, to those services. We imagine the community having space there. We we, we really think that while we understand the concern about the reduced amount of retail, the one thing that we don't want is to drive down Atlantic Avenue and see empty retail bays. Understood. Because that's the direction the economy and the market are going. Right. And then the, the other concern, which I believe um, the, the mayor brought up, is that we are quite a bit out of the 10%. So that concerns me considerably when we sat here last time. Oh, and another thing I just, to clarify one thing that was said about the grocer, it was said that we didn't want the two story. At our last meeting here at the conclusion, I believe, um, Ryan, you may have discussed the two story publics that you had been in and you discussed how exceptional it was. And I believe, Daniel, maybe you discussed the elevators. And, and I think we came to the conclusion that that it didn't sound unreasonable. So I don't think the city was the driver for not having the two story. Uh, it, it, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer on, Thank on you. the record. It was it was not just this board's uh, comments, but the community also was concerned. Um, right. There is, you know, obviously there's a lot of elderly in the community bringing, um, bringing carts up and down elevators, escalators, that yes. can be intimidating. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why. And, and I, may I just address your point about the procurement and the legality yes. of the procurement? Because I think this is a very important point that we need to understand. The contract specifically says that we have, we don't have to get approval from this board if we adjust upward or downward within 10%. Okay. Correct. The converse, the opposite of that, which is uh, which is also true, is that to go up and down more than ten percent, we need the approval of this board. Right. And so, and to me, that mitigates any procurement issues that you have. Additionally, the procurement says in a mul in multiple ways, and I, I put it out there: general concept. The, you know, the fact that we agreed to the numbers in our concept plan as part of the PSA, as the project description, doesn't mean that we are not able to reduce or, or increase over that 10%. And, and I would, you know, obviously you have your own counsel. I've been doing public procurements for almost 20 years now. Mm -hmm. I have filed my fair share of bid protests, and I will tell you that I do not think that this item is bid protestable. And that's just my legal opinion, and you may get others, but I, I do not believe that, I believe that what we're doing here is, is completely legal and fair. You may be correct on that, but as the mayor pointed out, and it's one of my items, because I was at that meeting, and I think one of your, your what you produced at that meeting was remarkably attractive. There's no doubt. But one of the persuasive features of your project was that it was going to provide the city with the very much needed parking. It was going to be spillover parking for the city. And while I appreciate that the residents don't necessarily want it to be that, that is something that is critically important and necessary for the city. And that was one of the reasons why you were awarded the project. So. In light of that, and in light of the fact that we are well outside of the 10%, it is reasonable to ask our attorney is if we are in fact, well, one, do we want to consider reducing down what we originally wanted in this project? And two, 
is in light of if we are considering doing that, are we not obligated to do one or of two things? Uh, one being, you know, going back to the drawing board and putting out another bid. And that's no offense to you because the project you're producing is lovely, but the city, I mean, we, we have a responsibility um, to be fair. So do we have a responsibility to go back out to bid in, the, in an instance where we're reducing down such, such a concern? I, I don't about? see a legal obligation to go back out at this point. The basic components of the RFP are still within the proposed project, meaning, that, but the difference is the scale. Right. So, and that the contract addresses in the 10% variance in the approval. I can't speak to a third party as to whether or not uh, a uh, one of the other proposals would object to the CRA. Uh, I'm not going to speculate on that, but I would tell you that my initial examination of the proposal is consistent with the terms of the RFP in terms of components the grocer, the retail, which you're seeing is a significant reduction be right. above and beyond the 10%. Right. So I'm sorry, you just said though you can't speak. If someone were to take issue with this. They would, they're beyond the bid protest period. They would have to initiate a civil action in court. Okay. And you don't think that's a problem for the city? It's always a problem if you get sued. Right. Exactly. It's, That's uh, so somewhat it, my the, point. The, uh, I think the object would be to disrail this project and, and force the CRA to go back to the drawing board and reissue it, the RFP. I don't see us being subject to economic damages, or any, but I think they, they would take exception to the process and try to get a restart. Okay. Thank you for that. I think, may I just quickly look over my notes and see where I'm at? I think that's probably it. Um, and then obviously I, I share the concern with the um, reduction in residential. Thank you. I, I, I think I already said that. I, I understand. I, and, and again, I think our, our team has explained why we've reduced yes. the parking and, and the residential. and. Um, I'm not going to repeat myself. Thank you. Sure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cassell. Um, I'm going to go right down the line again, Commissioner Boylston, and then you're not last but least I am, so. <laughs> Thank you, Neil, and thank you, staff, um, for the presentation and the update. I think when we get these updates, we don't go back far enough, and I think that's important. And I think there was a gentleman here, and this will answer his question. We don't go back to the actual RFP. Um, the actual, the, the RFP was only 30 days. So basically, we were asking respondents to give us a concept in 30 days, do all the research, go out to the community, renderings, design, initial site map, concepts in 30 days. We rushed it. Mm. You weren't here, but. No. Yeah. And rightfully so, right? We were rushing, we want 30 days, and I think we were on contract 60 days after that. Uh, and and we, we moved very, very quickly. And one of the drawbacks to that is you are getting concepts. You're not getting fully baked uh, plans, and uh, you're not getting plans that had public charrettes. I mean, we had a lot of um, respondents, but what, five respondents? Were they all going to do public charrettes? What, you know, one a week and then one, one week with two and the public going to all? It's not going to happen in 30 days. And we knew that. We want an RFP to go out, pick a concept, and then the project gets molded. No one could have saw this year coming. Um, so here, here are some of my, my issues. Uh, going back to that RFP, which I read again, and I suggest all, all everybody goes back and reads the actual RFP. Retail is not a big component of it. When it re refers to retail, it only says grocery retail. Aside from that, it goes down a list of things that should be uh, in this project and what's important to it. And retail shopping, it's not listed. It's not listed as an important element. Grocery store, 
or a pharmacy, a financial institution is, and then it's really heavy on residential, ideally affordable, and you're 100% at it right now, which is great. Um, one thing I did notice in there that I hadn't noticed before, and I've read this RFP several times, is it said that we are open to on and off premise parking. And this is important to me because like the mayor said, one of the things that stood out in your project was ample parking. And that's important, and I, and I get it, I, I, trust me, I heard it as well, right? All the neighbors of, of, of the six, seven hundred, eight hundred said no parking garage. They didn't say no parking spots, they said no parking garage. We are making decisions as a city to help small businesses, and specifically restaurants, by not requiring them to have parking. Matter of fact, I think you're involved with one of those projects. You know how we're gonna be able to do that? Do you, know how, do you know how downtown was able to do that? They built a parking garage. They provided that parking so that restaurants could move into our downtown, spark and eventually completely change our downtown, right? We're gonna use it to help the, re the restaurants and the residents open businesses in the Northwest Southwest. So we need that parking. So if you're at 352 today and you were providing 700, you guys need to find a lot of parking. Now in the RFP, it references on and off-site parking. So there's some flexibility there, but that, that's an issue for me. Um, the intent, you said an intent to be a connection to downtown. Again, I would, I would read the RFP, it doesn't state that. It, this is not a project to try to be a connection to downtown. This is, and it's very clear in the RFP what this is. This is a project to be part of the community. And this is the closest thing I've seen to it. And it's funny because, how much did you guys pay for the property again? Very little, right? <laughs> um, and so when you do that, when we made that, co made that commitment uh, that, that we were gonna move forward with your project, as a board, do we say, well, you better build us a bunch of stuff because you got the land for nothing? Or do you say, well, you shouldn't have to build a lot of stuff to make money because you got the land for nothing? You could go, I mean, you could go either way. I much rather go this way, by the way. I much rather go the way of saying, you should be able to do a small scale project there. You should be able to lean into what exactly what the community wants. Why? Because we gave you the land for free. Right, so you should be open and, listen, and, and able to listen. So I, I like where the project is today. So let's get to the, the request. I can't imagine, if you're really our partner, and this is a, a pr private-public partnership, I can't imagine not giving you an extension in a, when we've had a pandemic. Now, if you were coming to us and, I mean, you could be coming to us and saying you're not gonna do the project anymore. That's happening all, all over our country. That's happening all over the world. Projects are being canceled and you're not. And somehow you got Publix to not only answer the phone during a pandemic, but you got them to sign a letter of intent to open up an additional grocery store. Um, I can't see as your partner a pandemic, the worst in 100 years. This is not even once in a lifetime thing. None of us have lived through anything like this before. How could we not provide an extension um, under those circumstances? I, I, I don't know how we can, why we can do that. So I'm, I'm absolutely in favor of uh, providing the extension, considering the year that we have and what we're living right now. We're literally sitting all here in masks. Um, but there's a lot of questions that I need answered and the primary, the primary one is, is parking. Do you wish to respond? You. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Vice Mayor Boylson. Um, we hear you loud and clear. And uh, if granted this extension, we will, when we're before you again, uh, before we're before you again, we will communicate with all of the board members about additional parking opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Boylson. Commissioner Brooks, I was directing my comment to you that you would not be last. I will be. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> You know, good evening to everyone and thank you. You may remove your mask. I think it's going to. Okay. Good evening yeah. to everyone and thank you for the presentation and all those that have called in. You know, one of my concerns is the time. You know, you guys have ample enough time, two years. And one of the things about the community, if you guys don't come through, we'll be back at square one. 
That's my whole concern. You got to be able to deliver on what you say you're going to deliver in that time frame. You know, I came in a little late on this thing, but one thing I do recognize is that the project changed when I was on the board from what it was to this to not this now. And one of the things that's one of my main concerns are are you guys going to deliver? If we give you this extension and you don't deliver, then we got mud on our face again for entrusting you once again. And look, we have done it before and we back to this square. So that's one of my main concerns is time. Are you guys going to be able to deliver? Thank you. Sure. Sir. I'll be very brief. Thank you so much, um, Commissioner Brooks. Um, we've heard you loud and clear uh, in terms of time. And one of the suggestions that I would make to this board and encourage you to incorporate is uh, if you don't want to give us a blanket of, of 10 months, let us prove to you throughout the process. We told you it would take six months to submit a site plan application. We'll, we'll, we'll agree to that six months. It will told you it will take two months to uh, respond to city comments and, and get the site plan certified for public hearing. Well, you know, obviously we will agree to those deadlines. So that way you have interim deadlines instead of that just one big final date. And uh, I know your council extremely well and your executive director will obviously negotiate the best deal that they can for you and uh, we will try to negotiate the best deal we can for us and we'll have a compromise, which at the end of the day, I think is really what we're looking for here. And so we hear you loud and clear. And the one thing, and I so apologize, the one thing I was remiss in continuing to say was that the project is not going to change again. And how do I know this? I know this because I have six months to file a site plan application. And I can't change the project again because that changes the whole site plan application. And a site plan application isn't just 20 pages. It is reams and reams and reams of 24 by 36 paper with plans and plans and plans. And so it takes all of those six months to generate the site plan application. And if we were to change it, excuse me, if we were to change it now, we would not make that time. So thank I, I thank, thank you so much thanks. for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Attorney Taylor. Taylor. Uh, yes. Uh, just, I, just real quick, I just wanted to say, um, with respect to um, what Mr. Schiller just said, you know, it, it, it's painful for me to hear that because it feels as though we're at a two-year mark and now all of a sudden there's a fire. Why didn't we have that from the very beginning? That's, that's, a, that's a very big concern. And that's the reason why I say that if we're going to go forward, and the only way that I'm going to I'm going to prove, I mean, I'm going to agree to this, is that there's got to be a a, a penalty that must be taken paid if, in fact, they do not make it. That's Thank the way I feel. Thank you very much. Ma Madam I believe Chair. that uh, oh. our attorney wants to say something before I make my comments. If you don't mind, Madam Chair. Right, go right ahead. Uh, to address. The concerns I've heard through the course of this discussion as well as Commissioner Brooks. Uh, respectfully, I'd like to pose a question to Council for BH3, and that question would be, is BH3 prepared to waive force majeure? That shouldn't provide a strict timeline to this board if it's so inclined. Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and, uh, Council. Uh, I've confirmed with my client, and that would be something we'd be willing to negotiate as part of this amendment. So you're not agreeing at this point. You negotiate, okay? Thank I, you. No, thank I, you. I, I've, I've committed to negotiating that as part of the amendment. Okay, thank you. Th thank you very much, um, Attorney. Thank you, ma'am. You're going to yes, ma'am. Summarize after I give my. May I ask a Comments. question? Just one more. Yes, please. thank you so much. Um, so, Commissioner Cassell. Yes, thank you um, for allowing me to ask a question. Is what the mayor is suggesting a financial penalty something that you can incorporate, in fact? And then, if so, what type of penalty were you con are you considering? How much? Is that, some is that something we can discuss? I, I want to know that he's 
able to incorporate that? Yes, ma'am. There could be a component and an issue for the negotiations, consideration for the Fourth Amendment. You could, you I, could I, request a non-refundable amount or other I, concessions. It would be, it would, my, my opinion, I would say $1 million. Thank you all. Thank I, you. I, the time is getting late. It's now 534. And, uh, I'm sorry. Did someone say something? That was Commissioner Gray. Okay. I just wanted to be sure for those who um, have um, certain religious commitments that uh, might be in attendance, that's to be out of respect. I think we have talked a great deal about this, and I would like to end it by giving my comments that are going to be very short. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for your attention during the public comment portion and for everyone who showed up here in person to give your comments and to uh, thank BH3 for uh, submitting their request and for the staff of the CRA for doing everything that you've done to keep us safe in order that we can discuss this vital um, uh, request. When we began this contract, if memory serves me well, we tried to explain to all of the uh, contract or the developers who bid on it. This was a special, uh, special development. It has been before the CRA so many years. I don't even know how far back it goes. I believe Commissioner Gray told me that it went back maybe, um, this may be the third or fourth iteration of trying to develop it. There must be something that we're missing. The only thing I can say is that Perhaps one of my questions was, was this, is this a P3 development? I heard someone mention that. Is this a, Renee, would you like to? Well, yes, our contribution would be the land okay. and the developers providing the funding for the development. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe that the H3 was the fourth ranked developer and that because of a lot of the uh, parts, components to their submission, they won a lot of our hearts and got the contract. Is that not true? Very good, thank you. I believe that part of the problems with the previous contracts and developers is that commitments were made, commitments were broken, this is going to be the fourth, and as I said in the beginning, I believe that we tried to emphasize that this was not one that we were going to continuously extend and extend and extend. I believe that trust has been broken. I heard several of you say that. We came in with one concept, and now it uh, has gotten to the point where we don't even, re I don't even recognize the, the, um, the project. I think I said once before, and if someone else said it, please forgive me for taking credit. The development appears to be driven by a grocer that is still officially now named, uh, obviously officially before every comment that came in on the telephone because they repeatedly mentioned it. So how that got out, I do not know uh, because that seemed to again excite the community and however it was done Publix was the all in all but when we met in June I believe two things were asked of the developer that they not necessarily get hung up on a particular grocer and have that grocer drive the project number two was to stay in touch with our executive director I believe neither of those were uh, honored. And in the six months that I have been in touch with our executive director, I continuously ask, have you gotten any input? Have you gotten any update? Have they come back to you? I certainly know they didn't come back to me as a commissioner or now as chair. So in order to, um, in my comments, Publix appears to be driving this contract it has changed tremendously. Um, and another added thing, it appears that we are where we were a year ago 
with one month before a deadline, we are now being confronted with a request to um, have faith that this is what we're going to give you. And without any previous, we think we're headed there, we, we want to, we're going to change it best, reduce the parking, we're going to reduce the residence, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but in the, at the 11th hour. And I am not in favor of accepting one more opportunity to do that if uh, that's an amendment that would be something, even with the enormous uh, penalty, I think uh, not to mention, but uh, promises have been made and promises unfortunately have been broken. So I am uh, not in favor of extending any type of amendment. And now, DJ, if you would like to end this for us, I oh, hope you haven't I, broken I, I any would, rules. I would ask you to obtain a con consensus from your board members so the staff can clearly understand our obligation either go forward or not to, not to enter into any negotiations. Chair. Chair. We, we are not voting. Correct. We are, I'm asking for a consensus. Does that mean a show of just, hands? Just, or? just go by, you know, if you would, recap each, each member's position. With your position yes no. your, your position is very clear. With a yes or no as to whether yes, or not we will enter into a fourth uh, amendment Chair, negotiation. I would like to just comment, please. Uh, not as, please don't make it too long. I, I'll make it as, as short there, as, as you can, there, please. Uh, I, this is an important discussion, so I'm going to go ahead and make my comment after listening to all my colleagues, and they all have very, very good ideas, and I'm on board with all of them. So, um, Mr. Frankel, I think putting this in the hands of, of staff um, to uh, ensure that elements are added, I love the idea of this isn't just 10 months. You're going to get. You're going to get this, and if you if you don't hit and if you don't hit that one, then we know. I don't want to wait till ten months. We're going to put those plans in place, and there is going to be a penalty, Mayor. And I think that's an excellent idea as well. And I need to hear a solution to that parking issue. So it's kind of a combination of everything that you heard up here in order for me to be in favor of that extension. Okay, so you're you're stating for Commissioner Frankel that he is a yes for negotiations. I did not say that. Okay, I, I'm I sorry, I misunderstood you then. What I, I was, I, what I was saying is that all of my colleagues have made very good points, and I'm in favor of that package of every one of their ideas that I think would be necessary in order to provide this extension. I started with Mr. Frankel because his main suggestion was to allow staff to play a big part in negotiating uh, those strict guidelines. Okay, then. So, Commissioner Bolston, you're a yes. You're, you're a yes. It, it, consensus it, it, to go it, forward yeah, with it, an amendment. As long as, yes, as long as uh, I think the commissioner's right. representing that he'd be uh, willing to entertain a Fourth Amendment with certain components in it. it that's correct. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, shall we decide what Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Frankel said? Would you? Yes. Are you there, uh, Commissioner Frankel? Uh, I'm still here. Oh, good. <laughs> Speak, speak for, I, I want you to speak for yourself, so. Sure. I'm not more of a way to get this. I'm 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 sorry, what would you... What would you... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hear you. Uh, you said with certain what? Sure, sure. So, 
my colleagues and myself for those things should be changing a He never made me a a extreme monetary vision should this not go forward that what was here today would be true. I would also like to put this in the scenario that would show that we would be back in the past in the same situation. So for that, things that I thought all made to me, Mr. Zudu and the executive director can take a look at us Meet with Mr. Schiller and come back with the proposal. If the CIA and his board were able to extend that, this is what we'll do. And then come back with the proposal or whatever we need to do to the board and discuss whether based on components and extension should be there. Very good. So I'm, I'm, yes, I'm going to put you down as a yes with conditions with all that you stated. Is that acceptable? Yes, to yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, then. So, and thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Commissioner uh, Brooks. I'm, I'm, I'm asking for his consensus. Gray. Yes, I'm sorry. Ms. Gray. Gray. You can go with Commissioner oh, Gray. Commissioner Gray, I'm sorry. Commissioner Gray. Yes, Commissioner Frankel said that he does not have a blanket yes. Um, he would like for BH3 and CRA staff to sit down and come back with terms, um, possibly in a week or so. He supports what the uh, commission has said today about penalties. Um, there was a waiving force majeure that came up, and he would like protections for the city and CRA community, so we're not in the same position 10 weeks from now. Is that correct? Mr. And he, he also said within a week. And within a week, yes. He said maybe come back in a week or so. No, no, no. It can be. I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner Franco. And with the penalty that uh, uh, Commissioner um, Petrolia imposed of a million dollars, which means if they would someone like to well, put we that would, in that would be a term that we would negotiate a penalty amount um so just for commissioner gray it was stated that uh, to come back in a week or so not to let this linger on so we would sit down right away come back with terms for the board to consider and then we would take it from there so and, and again let me put it in proper framework thank it you, would sir. be a fourth amendment to the purchase and sale agreement that we're negotiating Thank you. So, Commissioner Gray, are you going to be considered a yes or a no as far as uh, negotiating? Yes. Yes. Well, I would be a yes. 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 I'm sorry. What did she, she say? Yes. She was a yes. Yes. Yeah. But she would be against. I. She was saying something else behind the yes. After the yes. I'm sorry, Commissioner Gray. We're, we're having listen, listen, listen. a lot of technical difficulty with this. Give Renee a moment. I'm gonna, Commissioner Gray, I'm going to call you right now. Hi. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, I will be a yes with all the conditions. conditions. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to hang up. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to Commissioner Brooks. 
It'll be a yes with the conditions. Thank you. Commissioner yeah. Cassell. I just like to clarify something that our attorney said. You said you will be negotiating the fourth. Yes, ma'am. Fourth Amendment. That's. But that's not. We don't want you to negotiate the Fourth Amendment. We want you to negotiate so that we'll move to a Fourth Amendment. This is a contingency. We won't move forward unless you're willing to incorporate this, incorporate this, incorporate this, oh, and incorporate that, that, the timeline. So yes, ma'am. That's technically uh, not the fourth. It's. I mean, it's the fourth, but it doesn't until we decide on all these conditions very specifically. So if we don't get to that next week, this is a foregone conclusion. If we're not able to reach a successful point where we think warrants your consideration, the executive director will advise you. Okay. And I mean, are we, we're not amenable tonight to agree on this. Are you amenable to forego the force majeure, allow a million dollar penalty and provide the letter of intent from the grocer immediately? Because the discussion we're just going to be here having another discussion if you don't think that's within the realm of possibility. Uh, with, all, with all due respect, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, you recognize. Thank you. Um, we're, we're, not, we're not prepared to agree to those terms tonight. And I think, frankly, it's, a, it's, it's unfair to ask us to agree to a million-dollar penalty. Um, what we have committed to agreeing to is sitting down and working out the best deal possible and if it ha has to happen within a week, then it has to happen within a week. Okay. I, I hear from you that you're interested in the terms and not necessarily the legalese of the agreement. So Correct. If, if I may ask the, through the chair, so we're talking about almost like a term sheet that we can agree to in plain language that everybody understands and then with your blessing that will turn Gets into incorporated a into fourth amendment. Correct. Okay, thank you. We sir. all agree. Yeah. I mean, I think you've got your consensus already then. Well, I have a question. Are we agreeing to what they presented to us tonight as a part of the amendment? Mm -hmm. Then I am thoroughly confused. I thought the discussion today was going to be rather or not, but they were presenting to us is worthy to, am I? off the track no ma'am that's a fair question thank you is there an answer <laughs> what, what i'm hearing tonight is we're we're doing it in stages if you will uh we're going to to come back to you with i guess a uh proposal from bh3 that they're presenting to you for consideration that would be the basis for a fourth amendment because uh and I think what we're talking about is some real, right now, business terms as to whether or not you're going to even entertain a Fourth Amendment. Because keep in mind, part of this process will be the consideration that you're requesting, the concessions. The, then you will have to consider a Fourth Amendment. Prior to that time, you're also going to have to agree to the 10% reduction, or excuse me, the, the approval above 10%. I'm going to advise you that's a separate action that would, should be considered prior to even approving or considering a Fourth Amendment. Because there's no need for a Fourth Amendment if you don't agree to the 10% variation. Exactly what I'm trying to say. I think we got a little off track with what we're trying to do today. They presented something, and I believe now we're... Renegotiating. We're renegotiating. and. I don't know if that's what everyone understood. I think you make a great point because we've all sort of indicated you all said you didn't that like we, what, any of what it. we were produced, what was produced, required uh, modification, specifically parking units, etc. And so, yes, Chair, you are correct. I think if we don't agree with what was presented, the moving forth with any discussion on penalties or the like is is unnecessary because we just don't agree it, it on it becomes academic exactly thank you thank you uh so shall we start again <laughs> with understanding what we are consenting to does everyone understand i i, I understood mike i know you have we you're agreeable 
Commissioner Frankel, are you still there? Wait, I may I ask a question? Certainly. I don't think he's necessarily agreeable because he's asking for changes. So he's not agreeable. If I may, I don't want to speak for you. Excuse me. Commissioner, Commissioner Boylston. I agree to allow staff to move forward and Can we, we, negotiating, I, sorry, sorry, negotiating the terms of an, of an extension. Right, but she's saying, are you agreeing with what was presented because you want more parking? So technically, I think you're Yeah, I mean, I, I, before voting on this, which we are not doing tonight, I would have to see a solution to that. Okay. Yeah. We're not voting tonight. If I, so, if I, if I, but in order to get my vote, I would have to see. No vote. No vote. I, I know. Thank you. With, with, with all due respect, ma Madam Chair, and I, and I say this very uh, hesitantly, what you're asking for is a vote tonight. Well, and let's be clear about that. I, Number one, excuse me, may I, may sorry, I please finish? And, and then I'll be more than happy to cede the floor. Number two is we presented this plan based on, on the community feedback and everything else. There is no vote tonight. You would have to vote uh, whether or not you want to go above or below that 10% number. We believe we're offering, we're, we put forth the best product that is reflective of this board's wishes and the community's wishes, as well as bringing a grocer. And we talked about timing and you talked about waiting for waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, we don't want to wait either. Uh, we've agreed to, to getting with your staff in one week, which I have to say is, uh, is going to moving mountains to do. We're committed to doing that. We're committed to bringing back a solution that addresses your parking issues, that addresses um, some of the other issues that were main that were addressed here. But uh, to say that uh, you know, do we want, do we like the plan or not? When uh, the consensus previously given was to negotiate, I mean that was a clear consensus. Uh, and now that the, that consensus has been revealed, there's, an, there's a move, in my humble opinion. If I may, though, I think where the um, issue lies is what she's saying is we need to decide is that the project. And the, the concern, frankly, is the last time we did this, we had a project and then there were modifications and then that begets another extension. And so now here we are sitting looking at this and we're trying to figure out how to proceed and you have people wanting different things from this that were incorporated previously. So now we're looking at another situation which is, you know, it, I think her concern is legitimate. Well, and I think with, with all due respect, I think you really should, if you're asking for things now based on the plan that we showed you, give us the opportunity to try to deliver that. And by voting right now, you're not giving us that opportunity. But respectfully, you had them, and then you it's, it's changed dramatically. And while I do appreciate that you got substantial community input, some of the things that were taken out were critically important to the city overall, such as the parking. Right, and as we committed to Commissioner Boylston, we understand that We've got to identify either on-site or off-site parking, additional parking, in order to get his vote. We understand from some, I mean, it sounds like uh, Commissioner Gray wants additional residential. I don't, that's something that we need to talk about. I, I, I committed to this board on the record that we would submit a site plan within six months, and I told you on the record that we could not, we would not change the plan because that would bump up into our six month deadline which by the way we committed to as part of the fourth amendment so that if we don't make that deadline then there would be penalties i don't know how much maybe major financial penalties maybe other uh penalties but you know there is a lot here and to vote on whether or not you like the plan now isn't fair because as as Commissioner Boylston said, he wants more parking. Right. And so give us the opportunity, at least give us the opportunity. We have a week uh, to get with your staff. And uh, I don't want to prolong this any longer than it needs to be either. But in a matter of fairness, somebody talked about partnerships. This is a public-private partnership. 
We, yeah, we're asking, we're literally asking for a week to get with your staff to see if this is something that's viable. And by the way, you know, there's that January 18th deadline that's looming. Yes. Okay, so uh, the hook is, you, you have us on the hook. I uh, give us the chance to wiggle off and and try to and try to make you happy. Okay, it's January sixteenth, so I just want to make sure. But it's not officially <laughs> the eighteenth. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. That's yeah. one of those things. Thank you. Um, both the executive director and our attorney. Which of you uh, need to go if first? You, if if you would allow me, please. Please, you have um, the floor. What I'd like to do is simplify this, and I want to clarify: you're not voting. With all due respect to Council of Three, we're not asking for a vote, but I would ask you to go back and revisit and get a consensus to direct us either to negotiate a Fourth Amendment or not. Simplify the question, please. May I? I didn't get a chance to put my two cents worth in because of the fact that there was already a consensus. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it was clear from my perspective, and I know what your, your point, and your point is well made, um, Chair. Madam Chair, but um, I think that we have a consensus that we were willing to give an extra week. So we're going to be one week revisiting almost like this meeting again with the changes. That's the way I understand it. And if it's not able to be um, reached as far as a, an agreement with what you've heard, you got your consensus as to where we're going. I'm pretty sure that the with the um, conditions speaks very clearly that if we don't have those conditions, it's it's your your question is answered. Right. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Which is, which I don't, you're not moving forward. Very good. I'm going to ask Commissioner Brooks. I don't believe you had a second go around at it. No, I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm good. You're good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Renee. Well, I was just going to add that part of the um, term sheet would include the project description. So if BH3 is amenable to making any changes to parking or what we've heard today, that would be included in the term sheet. So I just wanted to you know, add that in there since there were concerns about the project as a whole. Maybe they'd be willing to change some things. So. Okay. I'm back to uh, our attorney, Mr. Duty. I, I'm not quite sure my question was answered. You tried, <laughs> uh, Commissioner Petrolia. We are trying to give consensus as to whether or not we are going to extend this meeting for a week, having given our feedback as to what was presented today, tonight, today, and if the staff and BH3 cannot come to an agreement that all of our comments, parking, uh, I think Commissioner Gray said to residents, parking, all of those elements. And to me, they've told us what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand if we are saying, well, this isn't there, that's not there, this isn't there, in a week's time they're going to come back, and this is supposition, maybe I'm, I'm projecting, that you're going to be able to come back and put it back where it was, because I'm, I'm just confused. I think, if I understand the board's direction this evening, that we are to meet with BH3, enter into discussions as to the parameters of a Fourth Amendment, taking into account the comments we've had, the benefit would from... You, would you mind removing your mask? I'm sorry. My apologies. That's all right. The direction we're receiving tonight, we would enter into discussions with BH3 to incorporate, to discuss with them the basis for a Fourth Amendment, taking into account the comments received from each of the individual board members, report back to you within approximately a week or so to see if there even exists a basis for a Fourth Amendment. I would say a week, not a week or so. We want yes, to be specific. <laughs> okay. I, think we, I think we've played around too long. We've spent two years with the understanding that this was a special contract, a special agreement. We had timelines. We were going to meet them or not meet them. And it appears that we're on the same trajectory of uh, changing the contract. And so it's the consensus of everyone here that that is the case, which means who's going to make the decision? Is it going to be up on the shoulders of our executive director as to whether or not she's at an impasse or 
are we all each going to be gathered again? Well, that'll be the decision. If you want to meet, meet yes. next week, we yes. can have a meeting. We'll put in the public notes out tomorrow and meet next Thursday or Friday, if, depending on availability. I would respectfully request another public meeting. Another public meeting. Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay, with, then. If I may, with, with no presentations, just, just what um, Excuse me? From. With no presentations, Correct. just what is being yes. brought forward. Yes, very Correct. short, brief, and to the point. Yes. And can we agree now on a time for that so that since we're all here with uh, Commissioner Frankel and Commissioner Gray, are you still available? Yes, I am here. Very good. Thank you. Can we agree on a time? Okay. Is Thursday or Friday better for? Can I can I ask a quick question? The 18th is the deadline, correct? Yes. January 18th. January 18th. So if you're going to have these meetings over this next week, why is it necessary? And, and, and this could, and you could have a very good answer to this, and I'm just not thinking. Why is it necessary for us to meet next week? Why can't we meet after the first of the year? As long as it's before the 18th, why does it have to be next week? We're all going to have conversations to you with you. Either the negotiations are working out, they're not working out, there's details. But why do we have to meet immediately next week? Why can't it be after the first of the year? I mean, we're coming up, the holiday started like right now. Um, I, I just don't see the reason why, but you might give me one. That's the direction we received from the board is the best reason I can give yeah, you. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you guys should jump immediately into negotiation. We should all get updates in, in a week on how that on how that's going and where you're at. But as far as us voting on it, I think it could be after the first of the year. As long May as I say, day. Commissioner Boylston, um, this has been going on for two years. I think one more week is about all that the uh, board is willing it, it, to give it, it, it and if we extend it even further perhaps we're not extending it though it, no matter what they have till the 18th that's that's we're not extending that well if so we go into it really doesn't make it it really sir excuse me reclaiming my time if we allow them to if we negotiate and there is an amendment then they will not have that 18th uh, deadline so don't you think in consideration that they should know whether or not they have until from the end of next week until the 18th to get accomplished everything they must have accomplished? To answer your question, I'm not, I'm not worried about consideration for, for them and having to speed up and us do another meeting next week so that they can know. Okay. They're going to work to negotiate with staff. And then we've we'll heard, meet after the. We've period. heard your opinion. Thank you. Ma so let me just say, I, 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 I appreciate, I appreciate you, you as the chair, but we do all still have an opportunity to speak and get our entire. Yes, sir, out. and I understand. And, and I know all we're I'm speeding saying, up because it's a holiday. You I have just given. Get that. Excuse me, sir. I have the floor. You have given us your opinion. The rest of us, I think, the consensus is that we will give them another week. We will meet again if you are un unable to attend. I can appreciate that. The consensus of the board is, am I correct, that we will give BH3 one week to meet with staff and decide whether or not we're going to continue with an amendment. We'll report back to you four. within a week. Yes, ma'am. I'm ma sorry. I'm sorry. We'll report back to you in a week. Very good. Thank you. So is that Renee? Yes. I think we need to schedule one more week to that. Thank you. Commissioner Gray? She's, I don't know if she's no, no. Yes. 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 Yeah. That is the consensus. Thank you. Uh, Renee, would you like to say anything else? Well, we'll schedule the meeting for next Thursday. We'll put out the public notice tomorrow morning. Very good. Would you and like to give a time? Um, Whatever is convenient, we'll make it happen. So, what's the date? The 17th, December 17th. So we can do morning. I, I, my phone went dead, so I have no okay. idea. Okay. So we, we'll email everybody. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to meet at whatever time the, the majority of the board yeah. members are okay. available. I can only meet like four, maybe. Um, we can otherwise. accommodate. I can do four. four. We'll do That's four. fine with me. So four o'clock. Commissioner Brooks? Yeah. No presentations. No I'm good. Whatever you guys decide, I'm good. Right. Thank you. So we will uh, reconvene this meeting. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there's, there's comments at the end. No, no. I'm just making okay. a statement about oh, this. I was going to say, don't, don't close the meeting. No, I'm, 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 
<laughs> I'm going to give everybody another chance. Uh, as far as this discussion goes, we will reconvene on these, uh, December 17th, Correct. probably 4 o'clock. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. in order to complete this discussion. Yes. Is everyone amenable? Yes. Did I state it correctly, Mr. Duty? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Resuming the meeting. My agenda is <laughs> well away. Uh, we are now. <laughs> okay, then. Thank Happy holidays. Much. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays to you. Yeah. We'll see you next Thursday. Friday. Friday. Yes, Thursday. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Next Thursday. Since they're going to make a little quiet noise leaving. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Very good. Uh, comments by the executive director. Thank you. Very briefly, so I, you know, have been, we've talked about doing some kind of a um, virtual speaker series. So we've secured, along with the Arts Garage and um, also Spady, the um, author of Stamped from the Beginning, Jason Reynolds, mm -hmm. to um, do a virtual presentation for us in February. We're also going to be um, giving out only books, a hundred to the first, or a free hundred to the first hundred who um, sign up. Also, Richard Rothstein, the, the author of Color of Law, we've secured him for April. And we're working on somebody else to speak in March. So we're trying to keep the, you know, the equity conversations going as we get into the new year and not leave it in 2020, but make sure to carry it in to 2021 and beyond. So something exciting that I want to share with everybody. Um, also, we're still doing the Senior Resource Center at the 700 building, which is going really well. We have the December schedule that we're in the middle of, and we also have a schedule for January that's forthcoming. Just progress on Coriel, like Jones Isle again. We're doing really, really well. Um, Stuart and Shelby and the CLT have been phenomenal partners, and their the will should be finished with all of the homes probably in May. So we'll be celebrating in the new year for sure. Um, another update on the Southwest Neighborhood Project. This is going very well as well. If you see the, the image on the top left is actually an aerial hmm. of the Corey Jones Isle project with the, the new street that's been installed. Wow. So really, really happy that this is going so smoothly. That's great. And also Osceola Park is getting ready to go underway too. This is a two-phase project. Um, that investment is both phases together. So this is um, getting ready to start in the new year. Um, happy Hanukkah to everybody. Thank you all for your time today. Also, happy holidays. We're really, um, it's been a, quite a year, and we're looking forward to 2021 being better. Um, but, you know, thank you to the board for your support. Our staff has been amazing this year. We're all happy, healthy, and, and still here to accomplish our mission. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. I'm especially excited about that uh, equity, so. racial equity. Uh, I have each of those books now be forced <laughs> to read them. <laughs> and it's too bad they're not going to be in person because I'd love to get signatures. That would be marvelous. We are working on that. We're trying to get something. Oh, don't get me excited. <laughs> Yay. I've got to get my books. I've got to find them again. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mr. Duty. Thank you, ma'am. Nothing to offer this evening. Thank you for all of your support tonight. It was invaluable. Well, thank I, you. So I I said, uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this process. Thank you for keeping us on track. Did I hear Commissioner Gray? Did you want to say something? No? Okay. Or was that Commissioner Frankel? No, we keep he's hearing gone. something. He's gone. He left already. Feedback. Okay. He left. Yes. Thank you. Um, com comments by the commissioners? Okay, Commissioner. Just very, very briefly, um, I found out that we have um, a disparity study that is um, in progress uh, in, uh, on the West Coast, St. Pete. I know that we have uh, put aside money for the um, for the disparity study to be done here. Um, that did not get uh, hit the cutting board. Thank goodness. Um, thank you to the um, to the <clears throat> city commissioners. Um, as a city um, a CRA board member, I would like to just ask that in the event that the, I think it was $200,000 that was set aside for that disparity study by the city, if there is an additional amount that's needed, 
Would we be able to come to the table with it so that we do not miss the opportunity of being able to get that done um, this year, number one? And number two, um, you know, I, I know that our the area of the CRA is much smaller than the area of, of, of the city of Delray Beach, so it would make sense that, you know, the CRA could put a little something in if we need to. I sent a letter to the city manager and the city attorney um, letting them know about that um, disparity study underway that we might be able to piggyback off of in order to be able to get ours off the ground and get moving on it because, again, I think it's very important. It's part of the entire whole equity, trying to get things equaled out for all of, all of those that come before us looking for opportunities um, that we have not always been able to um, you know, uh, honor and uh, meet. So it just makes sense, and we I know that we're moving forward on it, but I just want to make sure that the, the board was okay with if anything happens that we need a little extra, because I don't know what the cost is going to be. So anyway, yes, ma'am. Um, actually, so in the approved budget, we did set aside funds for the disparity study. Beautiful. So um, the Siri district is 20% of the city, and right. this, was, this is coming from correspondence we had from the city in previous years. So we did set aside a certain amount. So, it, you know, and if it, we, what we were, I guess, saying is that we pay 20% of whatever yeah. it was. Well, I'm just glad to hear that because, again, I don't know what the cost will be, and mm -hmm. I know that we've got a certain amount set aside. I know the city is not um, rolling in the dough, and so just in case there was a need, I don't want to see us not go forward because we're missing a short, small amount um, of change. So thank you for that. Thank so, you. And thank happy you. holidays, everyone, and especially for those that are celebrating Hanukkah tonight. And thank you for that input about the disparity study. With all that was going on, I had it on my list, so you've taken it off. Okay, thank you. Good. One more thing off, off of my list. Uh, Commissioner Cassell, would you like to say something? Nothing to say. Thank you all. Have a lovely evening. And thank you for your support tonight. Commissioner Bolston? Uh, no, nope. not anything. Just happy holidays. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gray? I almost thought he said happy, ha happy hour. <laughs> I was going to say, okay. <laughs> Commissioner Gray, are you still there? Okay, then. Thank you for all of your input and for bearing with our technical difficulties. Uh, hopefully next time we'll see you uh, next week, maybe. Commitment? Thank, thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Brooks. No, just Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah to everybody. Have a safe and blessed night. Don't forget Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. I missed it. <laughs> thank you. I will be short and sweet, I hope, definitely short. Uh, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your inputs. I um, tried to stay on track as best we could because this was a very difficult discussion. We were not voting, and it's so easy to go off the rails, and the next thing you know, we're voting. So uh, if we could just keep that in mind, I thank you, each and every one of you. I thank the technical crew, especially no one ever thinks the, thanks the technical crew. Thanks to the CRA staff, you have a week ahead of you. I'm sorry if you had plans that are now gonna be disrupted, <laughs> but this has been a two year effort and one last week across the hopeful line. Um, good luck to each and every one of us and them as a P3 partner, we need to just keep that in mind. We are partners. And it is up to us to make sure that we uphold our side because this is our city. And if we just give it away, we only have ourselves to blame for it. Thank you for those who came out. They're all gone. I hope they <laughs> I hope they got to see the end of this somehow, live streaming, I understand. So thank you everyone. I'll just say happy season. It is the time of Joyfulness, we have a wonderful year ahead of us. I understand it's gonna be late spring, early summer. If everyone takes the COVID vaccine, whichever one you can get your hands on, we will end this COVID a lot faster than I personally thought we would. Because I'm a pessimist and I look back 100 years and it took about four years before they got out of it. And for us to hopefully prayerfully get out of this within a year and a half is nothing short of miraculous. Thank you. I will see you each next week on the 17th, probably about four o'clock. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Good job, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Before you peace out of here. This was oh, the first amendment.